Look at him go at it. Is that good? Is that gonna work? Mm-hmm. Perfect. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you're at in the world. How is everybody doing on this glorious Monday? We're working on an F-150. Could you imagine that? Really? Nope. I know. And, well, we ran into some fun problems, as usual. Uh, so, on an F-150, it has this battery terminal here that has this post that comes up. And somebody had lost the screw that goes onto this. And they are like, hey, no problem. I lost the screw. I got screw. I got, I'm sorry, nut. They lost the nut. They're like, no problem, I got nuts. So they grab whatever nut this is, this thing, and they screwed it on there. And they just, you know, screwed it on as tight as they could. And it looks like they used a pair of pliers to do it. That's how it works. That's how it works, right? Well, because they did that, they stripped the screw that was in there. Mm -hmm. There we go, so there's the screw that was stripped. So that meant... Where? We couldn't use no more. That's good. So that meant we we couldn't use this anymore. So we had to grind that screw out and put a new one in. And of course, you know that takes a good twenty minutes of fun and excitement. But now it's fixed. What is this? This is the piece we. Oh yeah. So there it is. There's there it is. All you can even yeah. That mm -hmm. that it's gone. I'm gonna throw it in the trash. No, I have to show it. Ooh. Okay. You want the nut too? It fell on the ground. Thank you, sir. Here's here's the nut. I'll put it right here next to the... Yay. So, what's going on in the F-150? Pardon me. I just I just did my lunch. Bag of cherries and some beverage. Oh, jeez, there we go. We're putting in a set of components in the front, coaxials in the rear, two amplifiers, radio... No DSP other than whatever the radio is going to have, which is fine. We'll, we'll play with what we got. Um, one of the interesting things that was going on in this that we weren't aware of, there's a lot of things. There's, there's a lot of things that are wrong with this car, and it's too many to list here. Plus, we're filming it, so we don't want to give all of it away. That would be no fun. But one of the things that they did was they wanted the cigarette lighter to turn on and off with the car, and I'm only guessing... I'm only guessing because they tapped, T-tapped into the factory harness, which this is this is our harness. We've already redone this. They T-tapped into the red wire here and came over to the cigarette lighter, which is located here. And they cut that wire and they went out of this over to there, done. And that's that's what they did. And it's like, that's not what you do. It's not what you do. So naturally we got it and we're like, this is wrong. And what you want to do is you want to add a relay because a relay allows you to take that constant 12 volts wire that would feed this. And the relay is going to allow you to switch that on and off with a secondary source. So we still use the red here, the ignition. We just added the relay in to interrupt this. So, you know, normally it'd be touching and be one piece of wire, but the relay will allow us to turn it on. I'm sorry, turn it off, turn it on, turn it on, you know, back and forth. So we have a color-coded relay here. So we have our constant 12 volts, which would be coming from the car, is here now. And then our output is on the opposite side, right here. This is going to, so you can see them right there. So power in here, power out here. And these two guys on the outside are going to be what turn these two on and off. So... This red wire, which is 86, this black wire, which is 85. When these, when this red wire energizes, that's going to connect these two. When that red wire is not energized, it's going to pull them apart. So we've accomplished the same thing, but now we're using the right power source. We're not using this accessory to power that cigarette lighter. We're using the actual cigarette lighter. So if you blow this, you're going to blow your same fuse that's in the car because they're connected. It's not going to blow out your radio, so that'll be nice. Um, and then you still get the same fuse rating. So if this was rated for 15 amps, it's still 15 amps because this might be only rated for, let's say, 10 amps. More than likely, this is probably like 25 amps. So that's why you add a relay to it instead of doing something silly like they did. Oh, goody, right? Now we've all learned and had fun. Look at that. Look, what the? Look at that. Oh my God. Okay, that's a nice one. Wait till you see this. Look at this. 
Look at this one. I mean, what the? What are we gonna, okay, so I know how you guys love this stuff. So I'm just gonna show you. We're not gonna talk about it, but I'm just gonna show it to you. And we're gonna come over here. And then, look at this one. All right, so tell me how this happened. So we're cutting, we're cutting, we're cutting, we're cutting, we're cutting, we're cutting, and then we stop. And then we, and then, so this was just pushed in like that. I don't understand why. We don't know why. We, we don't know why these are like this. There was four five by sevens in here. So we, we don't know the mystery of what has happened in this car. The battery died, that's why. The battery died, yeah. And so this, this was here. Yeah, I mean, what the? So anyways, we're not going to talk about what we're doing here because I want to save that for the video when you guys get to watch that later. But blade broke. I know, right? Yeah, I mean, that was kind of my thought too, but uh, yeah, I don't know. They ran out of time. Yeah, they were trying to screw up a car as much as humanly possible and the, the timer went off. They're like, all right, we're done, we're out, woo! Frosting's on the cake. Um, yeah. All bad. All bad. And this isn't a 911, okay? So th yeah. this is not a 911. We're not fixing anything. I mean, we're fixing everything, but it's not because this stereo has been in this car f since 2009. We don't know if these speakers have been in this car since 2009. We think there may have been two systems in here. Either way, this is not a 911. We're just getting it up to date. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Um, so anyways, that's what's happening here. But today is Monday. You know what that means, Fernando. Today is Monday, yes. And it's February 1st. It's a brand new month. <gasps> Can you guys believe it's already February? I mean, let's be honest. Can can we believe it's already February? Oh my I mean, gosh! What does that mean? I don't know. I mean, honestly, time means nothing anymore because yeah. there's nothing to look forward to. There's nothing going on. It's just like, yay! It's another day in the world of Stepford. Ah, we're all so yeah. happy. Uh, can you post a photo of the Focal crossover sheet? Uh, I don't know where it is. That's right there. Let's take a screenshot. Um, I mean, I can show it to you right now if you want to take a screenshot. Um, I mean, that might actually be on their website. Yeah, that one is, this is on the website. It's gotta be, I'll see if I can find a link to it somewhere, and then uh, we'll post it. Let's go there. And then if not, then we'll go with that. What's up, Mr. William Berg? Gr gorilla tape. Yeah, just put some gorilla tape on it. Um, sure. Uh, okay. The original installer might be out of business by now. There's a good possibility of that for sure. Yeah, I, I would hope for. Um, but yeah, so we got some nice equipment going in. So this is what's going in it. So we can talk about that. So we got some Focal access going, coaxials going in the rear. These are the four five by sevens we pulled out. It's hilarious. Oh my gosh, I don't know, it's hilarious. Uh, we got some uh, coax. I'm sorry, components going in the front door. For power, we're going with the R2 504 and the 750.1, and then we're gonna add in. Oh, oh! I'm gonna show you this. I'm gonna show you this. This is this is this is bad. Look, look at that. Okay. That. Uh huh. Right. <sighs> they had two of these. One of them blue. The new one is the wrong size. So. There again, they just, they, they don't know. They didn't know this was the guy. They didn't know it was an, you know, they just were like, let's do this and it might work. Not realizing the whole how subwoofers work thing. So it's just more of like, wow, really? But hmm, it's okay. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. We're not going to be reusing this. We're putting in two uh, P310s to yep. go for some real bass. So yeah, what? it's just, I know how you guys like to see this stuff and you go, wow, really? But, I mean, hey, it just happens. You know, if you, if you step into the car audio world and you, and you don't really understand the car audio world and you just do stuff, that's what happens. It, happens. it just happens. It's okay, you know? Um, so, yeah. it's not the end of the world. No. Uh, is that a free, free install? Yeah, it is totally free. Yeah. I think it was a free install, but... Um, can you can you show a grommet that goes through the trunk or uh, to the frame? And this? No, I don't. I don't have one. I mean, we don't. Maybe in another car. Yeah. yeah. From the trunk to the frame. I mean, to the firewall or what? Where, what kind of grommet? Where Where do you want it? 
Give us more. Give us give us more. Uh, I need to mount rear speakers to back side of adapter because the space between the surround and the door panel. Any concerns doing that? Ooh, no, that's a good trick too, by the way. No, there's no concerns doing that. You just have to make sure that obviously what that the front of the speaker isn't being obstructed by anything. So for example, like here's a trim bezel and let me flip this around. So as you can see, like it's really close to this edge. So this will not work like this because it's gonna cut into the surround. So this was is great for what it's being used for, which is going this way. If we were gonna to have to use this and back mount it, this would need to be an eighth of an inch bigger to make room for the speaker to move. So that's the only thing you have to be concerned with when back mounting into a panel is that it's big enough. So really what you wanna do is make sure that the hole is all the way out to this lip here just like on the grill mm -hmm. and then you can do that no problem we have to do that a lot of times on the nissans is that the nissan we got to do that on mm -hmm. i think so yeah so lots of fun can you please make a full video install of the pack amp pro for the dodge challenger when we have the full pack amp pro it's the same process it's the same yeah i was gonna yeah, say whether it's thing, a challenger it or a ram challenger, or ram, it doesn't matter yeah it's all the same yeah you gotta remove the radio and, it, it, and it's just a matter of whether we have the car here or not yeah. i mean if we have the car here of course we'll be more than happy yes. to yeah. but a lot of a lot of pieces have to fall into place yeah. for us to, to to do that but <clears> if we <throat> get one we definitely will um Uh, ground the amp to the frame through the trunk pan. What grommet would you use? Thanks. Ground the, ground the amp to the frame through the trunk pan. What? So the problem is, is like most cars are unibody construction. There is no frame rails. So I mean, if you're looking at a trunk pan, like a car. I'm thinking car, four doors, four wheels, drives on the ground like this. This is a truck. So a car would not be this. Um, and most cars don't have frame rails. Right. It's, it's yeah, a uni. It's all one yeah. piece of metal. Mm -hmm. So there's really nothing to go through to attach a ground anywhere else. Right. On a pickup truck like this, Definitely that would be different. Um, but never showed how to wire speakers though. So all right. So if you got the Amp Pro and you're doing the speaker side of it, when we film the video, the the part that you're talking about wasn't available. It is available now. So they make harnesses. They're called APHs. So like this is an APH GM. They make an APH CH, uh, probably 02 or 03 or 04. You get those, and that's how you would wire it up. It's a harness now that unplugs at the factory amplifier and plugs in, and it gives you all your speaker wires, so you don't have to cut anything. So it's it's a T harness that plugs in at the factory amplifier now. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't available when we filmed it, and we probably haven't talked about it much other than to say that now there are T harnesses available. Personally, I don't understand why they just don't put it all into one box bag and sell it that way, but they're, yeah, there you go, APHCHO1. Thank you so much. Well, but that's what you need. Yeah. Yep, APHCHO1. Buy that, yeah. and that's all you do. And it just, it's... Cut and dry from there. You'll be all good. Mm -hmm. uh, 96 Impala SS full frame. Thanks. Uh, in that case, if it is a full frame, it still wouldn't go out to the frame. Even if it's a full frame, I still wouldn't go out to the frame. But, if, I mean, it's just like a firewall. You're going to have to drill a hole. If you want to go out to the frame, drill a hole. But is, okay. is the, I mean... I've, I've never done that, even in 96. Even in 90, I would have never gone out to the frame. You know, I would just, I would improve the ground to the, to the actual body and left it that way. 28 degrees in Ohio. Woo. Can you use, go down? No. You mean go up? What am I doing? Right there. Can you use a sub amplifier at one ohm? Can you use at one ohm without it getting too hot or shutting down with long use times? Well, it depends if the amplifier is designed to run at one ohm. Exactly. It depends on how much battery voltage you have. There's a lot of things that depend. So, for example, and we'll, we'll just always do that. 
This is the R750.1. It's 250 watts at 4 ohms, 500 watts at 2 ohms, and 750 watts at 1 ohm. It has varying amounts of current that it draws depending on how much power it's putting out. If you're going to be running at 1 ohm, that is full tilt out boogie for how much current it's going to draw and how stable the amplifier is going to be and at the voltage of running to that. So this amplifier is made to run at 1 ohm, power it up, run it in an hour. It's going to be super hot. Is it going to shut off? Depends. It also depends on this type of power supply that's in the amplifier. So for example, if which this one does because this is designed to operate at a lower uh, battery voltage. So these are designed to work down to, I think, like 9 or 10 volts, which means they're not going to cut off when the battery voltage starts to go down. What they're going to do is they're going to ramp their power down so that they'll keep performing and keep the base, keep it going. So something like this, something like the uh, Kicker CS series amplifier, the yellow slash ones, um, those are made to just keep going. They're just made to, when the voltage keeps going down, they just keep playing and playing and playing. But what they're doing is they're throttling back the output of the amplifier. So if you want to go like an hour full blast, constant, just, ah, 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 you need power, you need batteries, you need to keep that voltage up. That's what causes the amplifier to shut off. Not the, the, the amplifier shutting off is a result of something else, not the, that. Yeah. If that makes well, sense. Well, maybe the amplifier doesn't take one ohm. And if the amplifier doesn't take one ohm, then yeah, then you're gonna have problems. Uh, if it's a true one ohm load, check your resistance. The load may be below one ohm. That's possible too. Uh, what subs do you recommend for an audio control LC1500 for a 2020 Ram 1500? Um. I mean, you could do a lot. I mean, you could do four of something. There's there's some room in there. Totally. Um, maybe some L7s. L7s. I just saw the uh, Chris paid four yeah. L7Q 12s. Ooh, really? Yes. It's whatever your budget's got, exactly. man. Your budget can do amazing things. That's all I can say there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, most amps won't see one ohm, want sub, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, well, let's not get there, William. <laughs> let's not go into the whole... Yeah, that. Where's a good sub for 2004 Silverado crew cap? Under the seat or behind... The Colorado? Did you Silverado. say... Silverado. Silverado. Oh. To get good bases. I mean, it's a Silverado. Crew cap? 2004, man. Oof. Probably under the seat. It's probably going to have to go under the seat. I was playing with little cars 2004. Shut up. <laughs> um probably i mean there again it, it's <sighs> head over to like a trend head over to uh these subwoofer enclosure you know type in your make model and year and type in so type in 2004 crew cab silverado subwoofer enclosure and that's what we do it's the easiest way and just kind of see what is out there and what is available for it unless you can build your box on your own then see what's out there see what other people are doing and then build that Oscar, Oscar is here. Oh, uh, Bobby made some bomb ass hot wings. Oh, Oscar's here. Yeah, Mister uh, Rookie uh, of the Year, rookie man. Rookie of the Year. Killed it. There you go. Yeah. What's up, Jets? Oh, Elias is here. Elias is here. I was thinking about that this morning. We got to get that rolling this month. That plan. Yep. We have a lot of things to roll. Possibly to, Possibly to make far. those amp bypass from your YouTube video. I mean, there again, it, always, it just relies on whether or not we have the car. Bazooka, too. Ooh, that was one of my things. Yeah, I have one. Nice. Um, opinion on the R-Type 6x9 components adding the mid-range to go three-way. It's totally doable. That's why they made it. Um, there again, if you can have some form of an active control for the mid-range, mm -hmm. you're going to get better results. Uh, I don't think they implemented it at all that well, meaning they didn't make a big passive crossover or any way to add it into the existing system. They just said, here's a two and a half. Now you can make a three-way set. Rock on. So that's really the hard part in it is how are you going to play it together? Have you ever heard the JL Audio high HL box with the 212 W6? What's HL? Um, I mean, we've heard a lot of their boxes, but, I, you know. Uh, 
high output. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I was wondering, could you make it and ship it, tried and failed horribly? Make and ship what? The the T harness? You could just probably you could just buy them. You know what I mean? It's like they're yes, pre-made. High output. Um, I haven't heard that one then. Um, installed five channel lamp a month ago. Worked perfectly till the other day. Now out of nowhere has turned off pop has turn off pop what would what should i diagnose and where is it um something has come loose more than likely or something has broke you just got to start at the beginning and work your way back so start at the battery and go all the way through to the end back up at the ground and make sure that everything has stayed put is really mm -hmm. the easiest way to do that um do Exelon 6x9 components compared to the Alpine R-Type new RAM? Uh, I mean, I'm, so if I'm doing the Exelon components, we can do the 3.5 with the tweeter and the 6x9. That is the go-to in that price range. Mm -hmm. That's the go-to. We don't even I don't even consider the Alpine R-Types in that situation. Mm -hmm. They would work, but yeah. I don't ever think about them because I, I know I can do those Kenwoods and get great results. So I just do that. And with that, we're going to end it there because tonight is Monday, which means we're going to be back at this again at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time over on the Facebooks, taking your questions, having a good time, That's checking right. in with everyone and saying hi and all that other fun stuff. So make sure you head over there tonight. And with that, this has been 5 Minutes with 5 Star. You guys have a great rest of your day. Bye. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How's everybody doing? As you see, Fernando's in there just jamming out. I guess the steering wheel controls work, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> that is awesome. Glad to hear it. So it's Tuesday. We just finished the F-150. Well, it's not finished yet. It's minutes away from being finished. But to finish it, and we can't show you what we want to show you. So... We wanted to, uh, no, no, don't keep it pumping because it's not royalty free. Instagram's getting picky about that. Uh, we wanted to show you what we got going on here in the back. Grab a cool light. Ooh. Ooh, it's so, it's like a museum with the little overhead lighting. Let me show you what we got. So, backup camera works? Backup camera works. I know, right? It's pretty cool. So here are the two amplifiers mounted in place. We made a custom amp rack that followed the contour of this area here and then kind of followed the contour of this. Uh, so now that is all bolted up into place. We didn't talk about this much yesterday um, because we filmed this so we could kind of, it's not a 911. It's more of a, like, this is some old stuff in a car and we're gonna put new stuff in. So it's a bit different, but those are the amplifiers. Um, we'll get kind of low so you can see that they're in. Uh, we have a new Kenwood radio in the dash. Uh, but not, oh, you know what? Pop the hood. Let's show them underneath the hood. Pop the hood. Pop the hood, bro. Turn off the engine. Turn off the engine. Ah, oh, there we go. All right, let me get this hood popped up here. Let me turn it back towards me so we don't ruin the Got surprise. It? Yeah, you left the key in the ignition though, so now it's gonna chime and make all kinds of nasty noise. This was a lot of fun underneath the hood here because uh, it was just a mess. I mean, uh, I think yesterday we talked about somebody used the wrong bolt. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so now we have, we have a new bolt in, so this is all good to go. And Fernando made, this is it now with the fuses on it. So that is finished. And then our wiring goes down into the air and we added the 3M strip cock. So the battery is all done. He added the labels to it. So we know 750.1, 504. So that looks cool. The rest of this needs to be clean, but I mean, that's pretty awesome. Way to go, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> you sure? Jamming it, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah so this guy is done we were just waiting to put the back seat in so that we could show you guys um speakers are in place but yeah so the f-150 repair is is all good 
we had to fix this because this was all falling off so we put that back together radio in place oh goody but that's it you know you guys will learn more about this once you know once we get around to putting the video out yeah that won't be anytime soon uh how much to build with two with 12 15s i have no idea man we don't build boxes like that so uh what's up dean and fernando kentucky 30 degrees it's like 51 52 Dude, here this morning so. i heard that that was out in new york that was like 20 something inches of snow 20, 20 inches of snow yeah You're crazy i think that's a song oh no it's 12 inches of snow that was a singer okay. the guy that sang informer yeah and there goes informer i don't know they did a remake of it 34 maryland oh my gosh nope we're so proud that you guys like that kind of thing. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm happy that it makes you happy to freeze your butts off. Audio control in the house. That's What's right. Up? What time is it there? What time is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, like but anyways, I'm happy you guys like the cold. Yeah. Because I, I can't do it and I don't want you moving here. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's, that's the truth. It's 70 uh, in LA. Wow. Uh, no, I have not worked with the audio mobile subs. Um, uh, hey guys, what do we got here other than Ford from New Jersey? Just got 10 inches of snow. Oh, wow. Dude. Oh, that was 10 only? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just got 10 inches. Who knows how many they already had? Yeah. Audio control in the house. Yeah. It's 70 in Los Angeles. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it'll be 70 here next week. Five degrees in Alaska. Yep. Oh, gosh. Have you noticed how many Alaska shows are on TV right yes, now? Yes, I think tonight is the Alaska night. I, I think I've figured that out on Tuesday nights. It's like every single show, I mean, they, they hit Alaska hard on, on the channels. The other day I was watching this, uh, and it's, uh, of course, the dad and the two kids, you know, and the kids are, like, red. All the time? All the time because of the snow and the cold, but they they, they perfectly fine. Like I said, I'm glad that they like it. Yeah. Because I don't. It's all it's all good. Uh, does the 08 Lexus GS350 front door take a standard Toyota speaker adapter, or does it have to be custom? Hang on. Marklin. Mr. Marklin is here. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Hey, he's a fellow runner-up winner like myself. Yes. Yeah. And if you guys in Atlanta, check we'll him see out. see Marklin. Yeah, Marklin Design. Yeah. I still remember running into him on the elevator. Yes. yes that, was, I that was awesome. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. That was good. That was good. Uh, anyways, what you want to do to check if your GS350, I mean, we're, we do two things. We either take the door off or we go over to MetroOnline.com. If MetroOnline.com has a bracket for it, you're mm -hmm. golden. Uh, if they don't, well, then chances are good. Either A, they don't know, or B, it doesn't take that. But that's that's how we roll. That is right. Morel. Is Morel there? Yes. Oh, hey, Hi. Natasha. Did you really need that panel, by the way? Do you, do you have an Audi? I mean... Just I yeah. have a guy right there. It's right there. They you have a guy? It. Yes. That's a guy now? It's, so, a, it's a third so the, guy. The laser, right the, third guy. the third guy? He's the third guy. He's the third guy. He's the third guy. Okay, the laser is the third guy. Okay, <laughs> works works for me. Uh, I have a JL Audio RD501 goes down to 2 ohm. Will a W78 work rated at 3 ohm? Yes. Yes, it will, because 3 ohm is higher than 2 ohm, and that's really all that matters. You just want to make sure you don't go below 2 ohm. So, for example, if you were to go to 1.5 ohm, that could be a problem. I mean, if you had proper battery voltage and all, you know, it was a perfect world, you could probably get away with it, but, yeah, no. You're, you're good, though, at 3 ohm. You'll be fine. Uh, Dean, use a five channel, five channel, one channel to sub, and the other four front stage bi amp has a five channel or bridge to three channel and run passive. Hmm. Depends on what speakers you're using, Bobby. Um, if you're using like the KS, I would go active. If you're doing, there again, it also depends on the five channel. So it's tough. Yeah. It, and plus, how loud do you want it? Do you want it loud versus you want to do. Like, you know, foo foo imagey stuff. Um, so both we've done, and it just depends, you know? So, like, we'll take a five-channel and bridge it to a three-channel just to get a shit ton of power. 
and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and then we'll take a five channel and we'll go active on it. And there again, it mm -hmm. just depends on the end result. Still fun, but different kind. I have a DSR-1 Good. and an epicenter. Ooh. Go into my truck and a base knob for each the DSR-1 and yeah. the epicenter. Which one should I use? Well, the epicenter isn't a volume control, so you really need both. You know, the epicenter's knob is for effect, not volume. Mm -hmm. So you would use one for volume and one for effect. Uh, we just did that in a uh, another car where we had both. Bo both. Right here. Yeah. That was a Toyota, I think. Was it a Toyota? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you technically need both. Yeah. What's up, Victor? Victor's in the house. Victor's in the house. Morello's laughing at you. <laughs> Uh, I might need to get a 911, 911, a Porsche. Ooh, just got a system done from a local audio shop Ram. Ooh, 2020 Alpine, R type, 6x9s, and getting feedback from the tweeter. Mm. Really? That's weird. I wonder how, the, I mean, did they just put those in it or they did amplifiers and stuff? There's a lot of things that can <laughs> cause issues, as you guys can imagine, and you're finding out as you watch the show. It's. It's a fun world we live in when it comes to car audio. What's that, Jason? Jason, oh my God, Jason is in the Jason who? Jason. Jason, Jason Fro. Oh, Fro. Yeah, he woke I'm like. Up. Well, yeah, he he's... was. He was napping. He was napping. Yeah. yeah hopefully not at the counter. <laughs> uh, we're running full active system with the DSP. Man. What do you do with the amp crossover? Leave it off most of the time. However, if we can't leave it off, like in some cases, like on a sub crossover, you can't turn them off. You just turn them up so that they're outside of the realm of what you're trying to do. So whatever frequency, so like say for example, on a sub amp, uh -huh. if it goes all the way up to 200, 250, turn it up to 200, 250, and then that's not gonna affect where you're gonna need to be in that 70, 80 range. Uh -huh. So just so they're outside of what you're trying to do, then you'll be fine. But most of the time, you leave them off. Uh, the 9605 Pioneer is a good amplifier. I don't know. I mean, I mean yeah. I mean, I like, for, I, what it, for what I like, it costs. For, about, for a little bit more, you can get a 902.5 Kenwood mm -hmm. Exelon. Mm -hmm. Or you can go down a little bit and get into the 802.5. But, uh, okay, so but they're sorry. both all uh, excellent amplifiers. The yeah. one thing I don't like... All right. What I don't like about that amplifier because there's always something that you don't like. I mean, it's just what it is, is how small the wire inputs are on that mm -hmm. amplifier. I don't like it. It uses a, you know, it uses it like a, a screw, like a hole with a set screw, but the holes are so small. I just, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't like that. You have to use the really tiny ferrules to get up in there and it just bugs the crap out of me. But I mean, performance wise, it's, it's fine. You know, it's a great amp, but it sounds good. And it's got lots of power. It's got lots of power. Oh my God. It's got a lot of power for the money, for sure. He's like, read mine. All right, hang on. I've got to find, what, what is this? Good amp, 9605, yeah. Yep. yep. Oh, okay. What uh, do you got? Wow. What? Uh, which processor would you recommend for eight, eight inch mids and four bullet tweeters? I mean, any processor would do it. It's yeah. just a matter of how many channels you have. Processors, you figure out channels. So like, yeah. if, you know, are you doing front rear with them? What, what's going on? So when you're trying to figure out what processor you want, you want to look at how many channels you need. So are you going to combine the mid range? Yeah. The and, mid and the tweeter. And like also lo channel, location. Or? So for mm -hmm. example, are we just doing EQ? Are we trying to do time alignment? Are we trying to, so there's a lot to consider. So like if you had, let's say four eights in each door, or four eights in the rear deck and two eights in the front doors, how it's all gonna break down and how you want to, how many amplifiers you're gonna have. That's what you need to think about with a DSP. For the most part, most DSPs are gonna do all the same thing. It's a DSP. You have the four core features of DSP, time alignment, crossover, equalization, and level control. You just have to figure out how you want to implement them. Yep. That's it. Uh, 4500 NEX, thoughts? It's a 4500. It's nice. It's isn't that the new short chassis one, or is that the 46? Uh, the 46 is the short chassis. The short 46 is the short chassis? Yeah, I like the 46. I like. Although they did away with what the 7-inch screen. Oh, yeah. It went to a 6.2-inch. What weird. are you wearing here? A hoodie. Because it's freaking cold. It's like 52 <laughs> right now. We're freezing our butts off. We literally just opened the door to start the truck up so we could test for noise and all that other fun stuff. Ha. Uh, where's the brand salsa you like the best? Ooh, somebody oh, was wait. watching last night. 
homemade. You know, my wife makes salsa, so I like it. But if I'm gonna get whatever, I don't know. I get mine in a jar. Yeah. Yeah. I love Valentina. And that's not salsa. That's hot sauce. Dude, Valentina is hot sauce. Okay. The other salsa is no. It's just. Okay. Valentina is hot sauce, and I would agree. Salsa. It's very good. Yes. Um, salsa Cholula. to me. Well, okay, so what would you call salsa? Picante sauce? No, salsa. Uh, for me, it's salsa, it's, it's, salsa, 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 salsa. That's it. This is what I have to deal with, people. <laughs> Just salsa. Hey, gents from the UK. What's going on? Salsa birthday. Exactly. Um, I listen to uh, LBC in the UK. Okay. I'm listening to UK radio right now. I talk okay. talk shows out of Dominican Republic. It's awesome. T's and C's, baby. T's and C's. What's up, brother? Oscar. Um, hey, Dean. How is the sound quality on the Kicker Q-Class amps? Phenomenal. It's still one of the saddest moments is that they're doing away with the amplifier. The five channels are all but gone, but they still have two channels, four channels, and mono blocks, so you could still build an awesome system with them. That's the cool thing about it is, like, you could buy the four channel and the mono block, and it all plugs in the computer, and the software reads it as yeah. one amplifier. Yep. So... You can build your own five channel easily enough and do whatever you want. Totally. Um, you just need a USB hub. That's it. It's pretty cool, which they tell you all about. Dean for Mexican salsa is hot sauce. I know. Duh. Come on, Victor. I know this, and you're Cuban, so come on. Also, I like to, I like to dance salsa. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Let's go into the refrigerator here. That's salsa. This, salsa verde. Okay, this is verde Taco Bell sauce. I have to order this. Um, I order it 12 see. at a time. Let me see if it says salsa. No, it doesn't. It just says, but that's mine. I keep it cold because I like it cold. Salsa verde. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it does not. Yeah, salsa verde. Anyways, verde salsa, I think is what it says. Remember, it's, it's Latino. It's got to be backwards. Exactly. And that's mine. He's got the Valentina sauce over there that I steal all the time, so. Um, Did you know if you outline is updating the ILX W650? Oh, sorry, sorry, Victor. I th you just have that awesome voice, man. I, I didn't realize he was from Puerto Rico. Who? Victor. Yes. I thought he was Cuban. No. I'm sorry, man. Well, he lives in the area of Cuba. I know, he lives in Little Havana, which is uh, Miami. <laughs> He's just got such a sexy voice. I love it when he talks to him on the phone. I still got to get him to do. He my, has that. He has that voice. I still got to get him to do my outgoing Hello. message. It's oh, either, it's either gonna be him or Eddie. Eddie's yeah. Cuban, right? Is Eddie Cuban? Eddie is Cuban. Eddie's yes. Cuban. Eddie's Cuban. That's why. Yeah. <clears throat> That's right. God, I'm so white. No, it's so they like bad. a pica, bro. They like a pica. <laughs> and this has turned in the salsa show. Yes. Maybe we should do that podcast. You can just, we'll, we'll just buy like random salsas and hot sauces and, and try we'll just it. talk about them. How does everyone sound about that? Yeah. We'll just totally deviate from car audio and go right to the salsa podcast. Yeah, and then uh, we can listen to music. Ooh, so. here we go. Trader Joe's Green Dragon hot sauce is the best. All right, I'm going to take you up on that. Hold on, I'm going to take a screenshot right now because like, all right, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm, okay. I took a screenshot and I did that because Haley's favorite supermarket is Trader Joe's. Okay. And so she loves... I have yet to be there, so I want to make a road trip to Trader mm -hmm. Joe's and just go. And I, of course, they have so much unique, cool stuff. It works for me. I knew you'd say yes, bro. <laughs> um, maybe we'll, maybe we should do that. <clears throat> hmm. So, all right, so. Or get you as a guest on the Boring Life. That'll be fun. All right, go ahead. No, I mean, we do a show with salsa, eat some music, and talk Portuguese. How about that? I don't think either one of us know any Portuguese. <laughs> we could get Daisy on here and she could talk Portuguese for us. Yes, yes. That's about, yeah, you know. Uh, guac salsa and green chili guac. And this show is brought to you by the food. Taco Bell hot sauce. I got to go with Bobby. Bobby in my refrigerator now. Taco it's Bell all the Taco Bell hot sauces. Yeah, man. There's one shelf in my refrigerator, one you know, on the door, that is all hot sauces. It's funny how, I like, everything turned. Well, it's because we found the yeah. other thing that everyone likes, which is hot sauce. Yeah. I mean, all right, so how many of you guys, all right, so hot sauce, as we both know, goes this way. Yeah. How do you guys feel about 
sushi what? with wasabi oh, that goes wasabi. this way and makes you blind because you're like oh no. i love that pain when it, when i go out to eat and i get sushi and the girls just watch me as i'm sitting there crying that's that's when i yeah, cry because yeah. you sweat when you eat hot oh, sauce i, totally sweat. I cry yes. when i eat wasabi yeah. but i love it so much yeah. Uh, Focal Flax or Rockford T6s isn't even a question. Salsa Verde is better. I love Salsa Verde. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what's in my refrigerator. Um, like I said, dude, I buy it by the case. Uh, the Flax. You want right, to get the Flax. Totally, it's, totally. Not even, it's, not even, it's not even fair comparison. I have a tray full of Taco Bell hot sauce. Uh, I just okay. buy it by the bottle. Yeah. It's way too much me work too, to sit yeah. there and open that stuff. Oh, wasabi. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, me too. I go overboard with wasabi. I Dang. literally cry Dang. and choke. Like I was last time we had sushi when we uh -huh. went with uh, the girls. Yep. yep. Um, I was gagging. Yeah. Gagging. No, I, I was like Kevin out back when he starts hitting the, which he's gonna be doing in a minute. So, I can smell that they're already having fun over there. He's so gonna start rude. gagging any second now. Um, yes, wasabi. No, I can't. Uh, man. clears your nasal passages, right? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Oh, it's so awesome. God, now I want sushi. <laughs> love sushi. See, I love sushi, but I don't like the wasabi. I, I just, love the wasabi. Uh, Got to take the wasabi, put it into the, to the, um, I, the no, soy I just sauce. I like soy sauce and that's it. You know, got to get got to get the sodium-free soy sauce, nope. mix it with the wasabi till it makes a mud because it's about the consistency of mud. Then I take and dip. I don't even care what the sushi is at that point. I'm only eating it for the wasabi. It's kind of like you with hot yeah. sauce. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't even care. Like, he'll put hot sauce on everything. Oh, everything. And everything. Fruit. It's so fun. Oh, oh, that Tamrak crap. Oh, oh my God. Dude, who who does Tamrak? Tamrak, Tamrak, Tamrak to <laughs> nasty powdered shit on watermelon. Oh, dude, that's the best. The best. Oh, my gosh. It's so bad. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so. Uh, wasabi, yes, wasabi mix of soy. Uh, by the bottle of fire. Ah. All right, 2020 stock Camry. Can I make something simple to put a mid-range and tweeter in the dash? Can you make something? I don't think anything simple. I mean, you can make something. I don't think it's. it's I don't think, think it's going to be simple. simple. Right. Um, now, if there is a, if there is a factory center channel provision, like from the JBL version of the car. I would probably look towards that for inspiration mm -hmm. and see what that gets you. Tahin <laughs> on the pineapple is the best. Ah, I can find your question, buddy. Uh, if you can type it again, that would be awesome, and I can read it. Um, Fernando, can you bring up my question that's again? I, I Salsa it. Over, uh, <laughs> overran it. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, read that. Sorry, man. Uh, what's behind you? Let me guess. An F-150? Duh. Yeah, we already talked about it. We're past that. We're on to Salsa. Uh, Oh, the ginger. I hate the ginger. I can't do the ginger. No? No, I, like when you're getting the sushi, the little ginger pink crap mm -hmm. in the corner. I don't know what that's for. I mean, I know it's supposed to cleanse your palate, but it just, you know, it goes into the dumpster. Oh, Marklin is working at 2020 Cambry. Oh, hey, awesome, what do you think? Man. There you go. Contact Marklin. Have him make you too. Yeah. Uh, on pineapple, Bobby says. Yes, oh, good dude, on watermelon. Awesome. Pineapple. Uh, watermelon oranges just put it on the sushi don't mix it see like my dad likes to do that but i feel once you mix it with the wasabi with the soy sauce the wasabi with the soy mm -hmm. it gets more potent ceviche all right let's uh ginger sucks yes it does what's ceviche that sounds uh, like an alcoholic beverage. no it's um it sounds like seafood. i've tried it oh okay uh tastes like perfume <laughs> Tastes like perfect. Uh, Kenwood 69 of threes for the Camry. The only way to go. It's not the only way to go, by no means. It's a good way to go. Uh, no, obviously, Focal makes the plug and plays that we do probably the majority of the time in, in the Toyotas. We do the plug and play uh, Focals um, just because it's just a really popular. You don't need brackets. You don't need anything. Now, with the 6903s, you really don't need brackets either. Uh, but it's not plug and play, it just fits. Um, probably the difference between the two is if you get that three and a half and tweeter, you're going to get obviously more, you're getting a three way set, meaning you're going to tweet, a tweet, a tweet, mm -hmm. you're going to tweeter a mid range and a six by nine with the focal, you're just getting a tweeter and a mid range. So there is a little bit more range with the Kenwood, but they both sound yeah. phenomenal. Oh, um, Oscar. Awesome, brother. Awesome. That what happened? Um, all right. So the, I find the question. You found the question. All right. Uh, any idea if you Alpine will update the ILX 650? Thinking about that unit with the power pack, 
bridge some components. What are your thoughts? Right now, I like it. Right now, they are out of them, as we already yes, know. They're, they're so far out of them. I mean, last, there was like 20,000 on back order, something stupid like that. Are they going to update it? Eventually, yeah. We know that they're going to update it. However, there is a new radio coming out, which is the 407, I think it was called. Was that what it was called, the 407? Yes. Mm -hmm. So they're coming out with a new 407. Yep which is going to be very similar form factor to the 650, meaning the power pack compliant, and it's going to be iData compatible. So that's really what's coming from them. We talked about it on the news show, I mm -hmm. think, like two weeks ago in the morning. We showed a picture and whatnot. I don't know if it's up on their website yet, but the 407 is going to be the, re the update for the 207, they're kind of doing weird things like they're 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 thinning down the herd as it were like they have the 309 and the 259 and they're coming out with a 409 but it's going to kind of replace both uh mm -hmm. so it's really bizarre what they're doing so we had heard they were going to come out with a like a w750 but we think we got we like it's not going to be a w750 we think the 407 is kind of where it's at mm -hmm. um you know Alpine is, like a lot of manufacturers haven't figured out, they've figured out they don't need 27 radios. They just need a couple good ones, and we're content. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, we don't need three radios. We just need one good radio that does what we want. So, or two, maybe. Yeah. But, yes, the power packs are phenomenal. Um, what is the speaker, speaker variable voltage output? Does that mean it change with the volume now? As a matter of fact, it does. So that's why we call it variable voltage. It's um, so when you variable voltage, yes, when you turn up and down the volume, the level changes. Hence the variable voltage. Uh, when we're talking about integrating out of a radio, let's say has a factory amplifier, you have fixed voltage going into the amplifier, or you have variable voltage going into the, into the amplifier. So think of like on an aftermarket radio your rcas the rca output would be and the speaker level output but we're merely talking about low level not high level but if you put a voltmeter up to the rca outputs on ac turn the volume up turn the volume down while you're playing pink noise mm -hmm. you'll see the voltage rise and you'll see the voltage go back down so that's variable voltage mm -hmm. in some situations where you go into let's say if this was a sony system in this f-150 it had a factory radio in it and the factory amp. If we meter the signal coming out of the radio, it's going to be a fixed level voltage, meaning when we do this, nothing happens. That voltage is being changed in the amplifier via data. So in, let's say, an older Honda Civic, Honda Accord, pre the current version, that was a variable voltage, low level signal out of that head unit into the amplifier. So you could use that to go into amplifiers preamp sections and be hunky dory way to go. You don't need a line, you don't need a high level line driver, you don't need anything. You just mm -hmm. side around some RCAs and hey, life is good. Bob's your uncle. Um, Bob's your uncle too. Now it is a bus that goes between the radio and the amplifier. It's not even a fixed level, it's a bus. So it's like digital it's mm -hmm. so we're there's nothing it's just can't do shit kind of stinks wow. but hey that's just how the world is uh bobby all right so paul give me the comp the new comp rt for this truck but i already talked to this customer that we about to put the um p3s the p3s yeah with the grills and everything so but i mean we have them we haven't used no, them we, no we put them in yeah, we no. put. No, we did. Where? We did them in the truck after the truck last week. The Remember truck the first truck? The, truck? the second truck we did. Okay. The, the, that, the, that. the um. Oh God! What, what? Uh, the Nissan. Was it the Nissan truck? Had the funky box. That is right. Yes, we put it yes. in the Nissan. Yes, that yeah. is right. The truck oh. after the truck. See, and you want to truck you, after the truck. Yeah, yes. you want to do a show where we talk about things we worked on. You can't so remember we, last week. Oh my <laughs> the gosh! The truck after the truck yeah. because this is the truck that we work in. Yeah, on know. Saturday, but you probably didn't see it. Can you replace a factory OEM backup camera with an HD in the same location as the OEM? Yeah, 
it's not as easy as that, Victor. But more than likely, the answer is yes. It just comes down to form factor of the camera. So, you know, at the end of the day, you have a hole that this camera is sticking out of. If we can put our new camera into that same hole, then yeah, see a problem with it. However, there's very few radios right now that take the high def camera. Mm -hmm. So it's not really a cool thing yet, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, like Kenwood has their high def camera. It's a 720 camera that will go into their uh, higher end radios. So yeah, you can do that, but, and you have to tell it that it's a high def, but like the pack high def cameras do not work the same way as the Kenwood high def cameras. So we're, we're falling in that area now where we have uh, Blu-ray and HD disc for these funky cameras. Mm -hmm. um, like when you look at the new factory Jeep camera that is a freaking 1080 beautiful. beautiful camera. Oh my mm -hmm. God, it's super sexy. Yep. Um, there again, that will only, that, work. you either have to down res the camera to 720 uh -oh. or find a way to plug it into the HDMI input, which on the high 10 you can, but oh, there, totally that's weird. it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's weird. It's a weird time right now for high resolution cameras. So I think we're, we're not there yet to where it's just gonna be like super easy, super cool. Hi Output, what's up? Uh, okay, then it worked, then would not work if you keep the OEM radio. Oh, it would definitely not work mm -hmm. if you keep the OEM radio. They're not. They're not, they're not cool. Nope. Hi from Nebula? Nebula. Nebula? Nebula. Never been there. Heard it's a great place, though. Yeah. Um, what's up, guys? What's up? What's, what's up? up? What's up? Um, well, I, okay, I think Jason already replied to this guy. I'm looking okay. to upgrade the center channel speaker and the rear pillars on the Dodge Durango. And Jason put uh, the Kenwood 3.5 or the two, two and three quarters. Okay, yeah. I'm fine with yeah. both of those. Yeah. I mean, unless you want the world's most expensive three and a halfs, in which case you can check out the Illusion audios. The Illusion. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. those are awesome. Carbon. Ah, so this this show today went all over the place. It started oh, out morale. talking. You know the morale? They don't really make it. That's a two and a half. Uh, is it, uh, well, that's yeah. A two and a half? Um. This show started talking about the uh, upgrades we did in the Rockford, quickly transferred over to talking about salsa, salsa, and then graduated to wasabi. Yep. And now we're back to car audio. So yep. way to bring it full circle, guys. Way now, to bring it full circle. What are you guys going to talk about? How would you tie the OEM camera of a 2010 Tacoma to show in the mirror the aftermarket radio? Is there a pre-made harness? There is not a pre-made harness. However, there is four wires in the mirror. Yep. Two of the wires are your six volt power, and the other two wires are going to be for signal. the signal itself. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind leaving it in the mirror, you only need to find the signal wires. You can leave the mirror to power the camera and just have the, the image appear on both. Let me show you right now, that's what we did here. And this one, this one still up here. Oh, does it? Uh-huh. Oh, uh -huh. didn't even notice. Yeah. <laughs> I just was worried about getting it in the, uh, all right, hold on. Yeah. So this came with the radio already in it. So there's the backup camera in the top mirror. And there it is there. So the previous install that was done on this, they just grabbed the two wires, the shield in the center pin of an RCA. That's what it is. It's a standard RCA. Uh, when it came in, it didn't work because the they used a crappy RCA. So we had to solder on a new one. But yeah, you could easily do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, easily is, I understand. It's it's not easy. It's not easy no. per se, but it's easier. But we um, have a video on that. How do to have retain your factory backup camera. Just follow the same process. Of course, it's going to be different in your car. but The it, process is the same. It's always the same process. Well, yeah, but I, sometimes it's different here, here, but yeah. My Ampro GM61 can only hear the subwoofer and not the voices. What would be the problem? Plug Probably the not the Ampro because the signal's the same all the way through. Maybe you plug like, it in. No, it wouldn't matter. Cause, uh, so on this GM61, it has a sub output, a center output. A lot of people get that confused. Um, and front and rear, but they're all 20 to 20. They're, there's no mm -hmm. crossover in the unit whatsoever. So if you're not hearing your highs, 
it's not because of the amp pro because the amp pro only puts out full bandwidth there's no actual internal crossover the only reason why it says subwoofer on it is so you have subwoofer volume control that's it that's all it is they don't Maybe actually have amplifiers so you definitely want to check your amplifiers yeah um do i need a six volt to 12 volt converter for that yeah. if you're gonna leave it in the mirror like this one is no all you're doing is tapping in signal to bring the signal back down the mirror will power up the camera if you want to take it out of the mirror entirely then yes you'll need the six volt elias hey what's up uh what modular head unit would you recommend for the 2006 mazda 16 mazda 6 nambos i think pioneer is going to be your best bet on that one i think they pretty much own that um Cali, Colombia. i mean unless you want to go crazy and build like a really sweet dash kit then maybe check out like a high 10 or an elevate but i think metra's dash kit if they make one for that is going to be for the pioneer i hate this angle um how can i make all the a speakers play on my forerunner with the party mode on i have no idea i mean it's a factory system it's a factory system if you're gonna if you change already everything radio and all that stuff you might have to go figure stuff out yeah go like power party mode stinks yeah yeah remember that yeah, yeah, yeah we, we had we had yeah. to put a uh, separate amplifier in mm -hmm. there because the party he didn't want party mode he just wanted the stuff on all the time right so we so added you might in have a, to go like channel for channel we added in another amplifier just to power those rear speakers and that was better than the party mode <laughs> that was better than the party mode hey from australia what's australia, going on in the land of up? no covid um I, uh, australia is what's going on from the land of no covid oh, yeah. any thoughts on the affinity cap amplifiers not really any whatsoever i mean they're neat looking they have weird shape to them but i haven't done anything with them so i i'm not gonna and it's funny today is taco tuesday is it we talk about salsa. oh salsa yeah that's true wonder if i should hmm, maybe on the way home i have a date in dsp do i use the us do i use the sub output of my head unit to grab those frequencies or can i use the mid high channels from the head unit well, I mean, it's got four channels of input. It's a four to eight, regardless of whether it's a Dayton or anyone else's four to eight DSP. Mm -hmm. If you're coming out of an aftermarket head unit or a factory head unit, if it, I'm assuming aftermarket because there's a subwoofer output. If it's aftermarket, then you could just come out of front and rear and leave the crossovers off on the radio and it'll be full frequency. The only thing the sub is going to do, the sub channel is going to give you volume control for whatever it's doing. Mm -hmm. So if you want to use the subwoofer level control from the radio, then yes, you would plug that into three and four on the Dayton and one and two would be front, three and four would be sub and you would run it that way. If you want balance and fader, mm -hmm. then you would run one, you know, front, rear, front and rear. It, it really doesn't depend. All the channels are, are pretty much going to do the same thing. Now, if you're on a factory radio and you're using the 408, hopefully you have a car that only has four channels of output. So I guess that's kind of a moot point because you really can't do any summing or anything like that with that DSP. So right. we'll just uh, go with the original answer. What's the best way to get RCA outputs from the head unit in a Ram 1500? What year? I don't know. Uh, if it's a newer model, it is a newer model, meaning within the last five years, mm -hmm. uh, I would use an Amp Pro, Correct. or I would use the iData AR. Mm -hmm. so, which, okay. if I'm going to do iData, like well, if I'm going to do iData AR, I could just go into a DSR one. So I would just grab a. So it depends. If you want a DSP and all that cool sexiness, you can get the um, Kenwood. Well, no, you can get the what is it? The I don't remember what harness it is. But either one of them, there, there's really easy ways to do it. Go to idata.com, see what they have. Go over to uh, Amp Pro, see what they have. Mm -hmm. Super, but yes, also, it's an easy one to get. The, uh, the 600? Yeah, the 600 606 the, DSP yeah. amplifier. You can use that one. We have a video on that one, too. So. Hello from the UK. What's the best way to get some deep bass in a 2010 BMW Z4? uh could i put a loaded enclosure in the trunk and op uh, open the ski hatch to let some sound in if it's got a ski hatch yeah totally totally could do that if the ski hatch it, like it's a full ski hatch into the front of the car by all means 
do that. That'll get you some base into the car for sure. Um, without the ski hatch, it's gonna be totally useless for sure. Um, you could probably do some form of a down firing enclosure so that it fits with the top down. Like look at maybe, um, obviously you could have a custom box built, but look at something like, just to give you an idea what I'm talking about down firing box, like Kicker has the comp uh, 10 and 12 and eight down firing enclosures that are probably gonna be low enough that they'd fit underneath that tray that comes down or unless it's a hard tray. Um, but yeah, check that out. I want to add an LC41800 to play all my speakers will be a good choice. That would be a good choice. I mean, it's a great amplifier. Well, it'd I would be definitely perfect go for with you. the D so you can have more play on the, on the DSP. Well, I mean, if you want a DSP, the, the D is a good value. Definitely a good value. Who doesn't like D, right? I uh, can't wait to see y'all in March and get get my crappy JBL system changed out. Going with three-way Focal Access, Pioneer 4500, and the Punch 1005 and a Tundra. Yeah. Oh, okay. I remember this guy. He was talking to Paul the other day when I was up there. I thought okay. he had the. I thought he was trying to do a power. Three-way Focal. Power huh? on the three-way Focals, and I was like, power ain't gonna do it. But then he's like, Is no, it it's it's the Punch. Oh, okay. Yeah, but the Punch will be fine. Punch is enough power. Power the power T one thousand five is definitely not enough power to do that. But the the punch, the bigger form factor is. Um, how many battery? One, two, whatever works for you. Tell the UPS guy to keep it quiet. I know, right? I don't even know if it was a UPS guy. It was probably a food delivery guy. We get a lot because we have two restaurants in the plaza, as we know. Sushi and Indian RD food. Carbon. Thank you, man. How much ampers? I would love to see what they say, but... Oh, uh, yeah, I know. Sorry. Yeah, I can't translate. System. I believe they're saying hi. <laughs> Just go hi. Hi. Hola. All right. Well, Listen. System Amir. Hi. Hi. Uh, that's going to be it for today, guys. That's been 5 Minutes of 5 Star. Thanks for playing along with us. You guys have a great rest of your day, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Fernando, where are you? I can't see you, Fernando. Oh, there he is. Whoa. Hey, okay. We're all going to get seasick. Oh, more. Yep. Let's go more, more. What the heck? <laughs> you busted a move. <laughs> all right. Well, before. All right. So who cares? We're working on another Ford. Let's just leave it at that and move on past that. It is a price. Let's let's just let's go over because we got nothing to talk about here. I mean, no. To we're we're just getting started on it. It's it's a Ford F two fifty. Uh, came well, we not get just getting started. We already went through the process. Oh yeah, we've already been through the whole nightmare. Uh, um, but we finally gonna go and it's like all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One thing. One thing I will say. So. I, I don't know what they were doing with this harness, but this is, as you can see, it, I noticed this right away. I was like, wait a minute, what the hell is going on here? The harness is in really bad shape. So we are gonna have to replace this because for some reason this went thermal nuclear on him. When it came in, it had no sound. There was no sound coming out of the radio. It just said bad speaker, which we've established was speaker number four. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're gonna this this is this is no bueno um, yeah I know well it's from listening to the Audison training today I picked up a you know no idea it's just osmosis <laughs> so anyways okay so the whole purpose of going with a smart harness is so that everything is there so right now the steering wheel controls don't work which hopefully is just because this thing is burnt up um, but they ran a reverse wire which doesn't make any sense because they ran accessory wire too i, I don't know what i that's we got to figure out what that accessory for wire is okay. for um our life is never boring let's just leave it at that apparently so we'll come back to that at a later date once we figure it out but we have cool stuff yes we have cool indeed. stuff that that was why we wanted to so these are the factory look at these pieces of crap this is a ford factory five by seven um yeah garbage I know, man. Who cares? So frustrating. <laughs> so frustrating. This is what's important today. Why does it make it a dumb harness if it's wired wrong? <laughs> does it make it a dumb harness if it's wired wrong? 
no. No, I think it makes it a dumb installer. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Yeah, it is. But it's, it's, the heart is still waiting for so like, hey, most, I'm here. I can tell you with, with 100%, anytime we have a question about a smart harness, it is because they did not read the manual. And that, that is regardless of whether it's a random guy that walks in off the street, a seasoned veteran installer, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Guaranteed, if there is a problem with a harness, it is because they did not read it. Look at this, Mel. Mel, look at this. Look, look, look at this. Can you look at can, this? Can you look at this? Look at this, Mel. Mel, Mel, can you look at this? What the <laughs> heck, Mel? I don't know what was going on. We haven't figured it out yet, Mel, but... And it wasn't ours. We didn't put it in. No, not at all. And it's Mel from AMP. <laughs> What's going on, Mel? Ah. Oh, that's You're supposed cool. to read the directions? No. What? <laughs> no, this is cool. All hot sauce is salsa, but not all salsa is hot sauce. Ah, I like that one. I mean, I'm not going to disagree with that. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. I mean, I'm not. I, I would. I will. I will take that. I, I, yeah, whatever. Okay, we're not going to talk about hot sauce today. We we spent enough topic on that yesterday. Yeah. But anyways, back to the original rant, as it were. You got to read the manual, guys. If you if you have a problem with the harness that's not functioning the way it's supposed to, nine times out of ten, it is that instructions mm -hmm. and i'll give you a case in point with this particular harness right here 100 percent case in point i know why they ran that reverse wire i know why they ran this wire and it's because on this harness the reverse wire this this there's a purple white somewhere buried inside of here it is not reverse it's not it's not reverse it's going to be something else like emergency brake vss or parking yeah emergency brake vss yeah so it's not going to be reversed so my guess is they hooked up that purple white wire it didn't do it they don't read because in the instructions it tells you what it's for and they're like oh why didn't it work that All would right. be why okay All sorry right, real quick yes uh before we open you can go the, slow. the magic box yes perfect timing uh 15 2015 ram with an alpine system yep just roll in the shop can I install a five channel with an LC7i? If you he doesn't care about losing the dash and the roof speakers. Um, no, it's not enough channels. No, because why? For, You're losing two. Well, yeah, but it's not enough channels because you got to figure it now. You got to sum because it's a five channel amp. That means front, rear, sub. Okay, LC7i, six channels of input. And it's actually only three paired channels of input. Mm -hmm. It's not like you can use them independently. You have a front tweeter, a front mid, you have rear, you have rear mid, and you have sub, and you have center. And all of them do different things. So mm -hmm. it's not like you can just put an LC7i in there and get all the signals you need to... The, what you're going to end up with is an unhappy customer. You understand? Think about it. Okay. If you do an amp pro... Yes. or an that, AR I, or that, something that like that, smart, yes. that is why you do those things because yes. they take all those, all that information, all that bus yes. information, all the door chimes, all of that bus information gets routed through six channel output yep. on the Amp Pro. Yep. The LC7i, you're going to have to sum. Now the Alpine, the, the door tram Alpine system has a center channel? Yes, of course it has a center so channel. So it's kind of like it, the, from the factory EQ. It's up mixed. Yes. 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 So technically, uh, and Amp has, Pro, that will be the... the, the yeah, I, I mean, the only way you could do that is if you're just going to put the five channel amplifier on the front mid range and front mid base and a subwoofer. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the only thing you can do with five channel. Now, if you're trying to do front rear sub, bad 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 idea it's not the right tool for the job at all you know because you can't you can't sum enough channels even with an lc8i which for some reason everyone forgets the lc8i yeah. it's really not enough channels so forget about the dsp if he doesn't care about dsp you can you can install Ampro. just a regular a regular five channel amplifier but with the amp pro yeah yeah, yeah you got to get the right signal so it's it's a little bit more than an lc7i but it's the tool that you need to do the job, for sure. Anything else, you're just going to be, like, hating life, for sure. I, I mean, it, 
And there again, even if you were to do a DSP, so let's say you were asking about like a DM608. Let's say right. I'm gonna run DM608. <clears throat> still wouldn't still be the right tool, need. wouldn't be the right tool for the job. Yeah. It's only got six channels of input, you're gonna run into the same exact problem. The only right. difference with that piece is is it's four pair two paired channels and two discrete channels. Uh -huh. So it's an actual it's a set of channels, one and two. And you also get, you can do like center and sub on five and six. Right. But if the card is all mixed, how do you oh, want to clean that signal? Do you just like... It's going to suck. Yeah. It's going to suck. I mean, what we would do in the past is channel for channel amplification. Mm -hmm. You know? But like, like, if he doesn't have the money to do that, and uh, Ampro, that is like, or... No, that's it. No, yeah. You gotta have an amp. You gotta have an amp pro. I mean, or you gotta have a big, big summing device and a lot of amplifiers, and then you're just gonna fight yeah. the thing. It doesn't make any sense to work that hard for mm -hmm. something. Uh, here's my problem. Here's, here's <laughs> lens bit one HD baby it doesn't have the money. But yeah. what is a bit one HD gonna do? Yeah. I mean, there again, we got a five channel amp, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. It, it, these are solutions and problems that we run into daily as, as an installer, as we all know. Um, yeah. We have tools that do this. And these are the tools. Like, if, you hand, if I need a Torx screw and you hand me a Phillips screwdriver, if I have a Torx screw and you hand me a Phillips screwdriver, I, there's no point in me trying to unscrew that screw. I can fight it all day long. Yeah. Okay? And if you go, oh, that's all I have. Well, then we're done. Yeah. We're done. It's just not worth doing at that point. Right. It's not worth spending my time fighting with the screw with the yep. wrong tool. Yeah. And the only thing that looks bad in the end is me because I couldn't get the damn screw out. Right. So, like, if you fight this amplifier the whole time and the summing and it sounds like crap when you're done, you took his money doing a job that was the wrong job. Right. Right. And using the wrong tools, yeah. and, and it's not, and it's not blaming anyone. It's not. It's just. It's one of those things where it's like, this is the crap we have to deal with all the time. And, and the and the answer is always, well, he doesn't have the money. And he doesn't have the money to get the job done. Then mm -hmm. come back when you do. Yeah. yeah. And if he can take it somewhere else, and this is the bonus. This is the bonus. If he takes it somewhere else and gets it done, because he's like, screw you guys, I'm gonna take it somewhere else. Guess what? He'll be back. Because you were the guy that told him how to do it right. So mm -hmm. when this other guy does it and screws it all up, mm -hmm. now you're gonna make more. And it happens to us. All the time. It happens to us all the time. The people That's come why we get here. those cool 911 videos. Correct. <laughs> uh, customers came and they're like, I want to do this. And uh, uh, this is the pieces that you need. Oh, no, that's too much. So, boom. They go. They later, find out the hard way. You know, and they find out, oh, yeah, they install it and it doesn't sound good. It's, it's really it's bad. It's funny how no one, has enough money to do it. no one has enough money to do it right the first time, but somehow they'll find the money to fix it the well, second time. We never learn the first time. I guess you know? not. Yeah. So. I mean, duck. Ow! Hit my head. Yeah, exactly. Um, but anyways, that that's today's rant. Okay, on to happier things. Let's not, let's not, <laughs> they call 911 videos. <laughs> William's on point today, man. Yeah. What's up, Mr. Berg? All right, so the reason why we are here to talk today is what's in this box here. We're super excited about. Just showed up. Um, we're going to be doing a giveaway for some of these because some of these are just... But we're going to be doing a giveaway. We don't know how we're going to do it yet. We don't know how many we're going we, to we do don't, away, We don't know but... anything other than we want to show them to you. Yes. Someone is going to get one of this. A couple someone's yeah, going to get I mean, Not today, though. We just want to show them today. to you. I'm putting three amps in my car. Can I run a single remote from the stereo to all three amplifiers? Yeah. Oh, hey, it's Tommy Who. Uh, yes, Ooh. you can. I would strongly recommend it's adding cool. a relay, though. Okay, at three amps, you really need a relay. If you don't know how to wire up a relay, it's no problem. We have a video. So just search YouTube for remote turn on, uh, remote turn on relay, and we, sh we walk you through the process of how to do it. Um, dash cams, these are not dash cams. Although, you're right, I forgot about this JVC dash cams. Um, <laughs> give it to the best Instagram name. No. <laughs> I'll send one to Tommy Who, though. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let's see what we got here. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get to the point. Here we go. Ooh, look at that. 2021. It's the Clean Wire Club. Uh, audio control calendars, guys. That's right. They're here. They finally made it. Chris was talking about these. If you guys caught the live show. Um, don't rip the box. The, yeah, don't, don't. You, you can rip the cover. Um, 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, yes, I've done two amps a lot, but with three, almost be safe. Add a relay. Yes, definitely. Three is always the limit. Um, or three of anything. All right, so here we go. This is the 2021 Audio Control Clean Wire Club. Uh, uh, hey, and five star, I'm just gonna say. All right, so, all right, so there is January. So we're just gonna look at January. Yeah. For, all right, let's have a moment of silence. Tip one for January, because that's over. All right, February. I'm, I'm detecting a theme here. A lot of audio control. Oh, wait, it's their calendar. <laughs> well, yeah, look at that. So that's pretty cool, yeah. I know, right? Isn't that mm -hmm. awesome? Thank you. Only if it's signed by the guys. Oh, yeah, we'll definitely sign these. Yeah. We'll definitely sign these before they go out. Oh, this, you know, it's funny. This is your favorite. That's this, my favorite. This is the trunk lid car. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, or, so the rear the deck. Yeah. Someone was asking the other day about rear decks. I don't mm -hmm. remember where they were asking mm -hmm. about them. They were asking if we've ever put amps in the rear deck. And mm -hmm. this, the bigger picture on this one shows how much detail went into, oh, what a pain that was. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, look at all that. Yep. Oh, big yeah. stinger battery. Yeah, that was right after we got what the laser. Good, cool laser. Yeah, yeah, because I had to go to Home Depot and get wing nuts. All right, there we go. There's another one. Ooh, look at those bridges. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people miss that in the pictures on how you, yeah, making it big makes it really cool. Bridges. All right, May. Hey, the best month ever, June. Ah, the D61200. Oh, that's funny. That's just too funny. It is too um, funny. All right, so there we go. Ooh, Ooh LGDs. LGDs I'm, I'm glad we got that in there. LGDs. I'm glad we got it. It's July. Ah, uh, August. Wow, that's Look like it. a centerfold shot right there. Holy cow. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. the sex happening. Wow. Ooh, Ooh, nice and tight. Look at I that. guarantee you that's in a Ford F-150. I, I can guarantee that's a Ford F-150. You know how I know, guys? This yellow ground wire right here. That means we ran the Stinger marine wire. That was cool. That was yeah, cool. it's high level too. Wow. Okay. Um, what is this one? This is a, this is a Toyota. Is it a Toyota? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're too much. <laughs> this is the best. This is best. October. Is this, this yeah, is, this, this is Fernando's day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yep. Ah. Uh, all right. Hold on. November. All right. Nice, clean, and simple. November. Another F-150 or the some form of a Ford. Yep. Yep. Uh -huh. Look at that. Uh, and then December. December. Wow, Nav TV is getting the getting the shout out there. There again, I'm guessing this is this is either. A, I'm it's gonna send be a the Ford. invoice to the. Uh, yeah. seven. <laughs> definitely send them an invoice. Yeah. All right, there so that's go. December. So there we go. What's on the back? Nothing. Yeah. White page. That's it. Yeah, so that's it. Those are the 2021 calendars. We're gonna be shipping some of these off. We'll figure out a way to give some of these away. Um, red and yellow. Yeah. So for for those of you guys that, that are questioning the red and yellow thing. Uh, super simple. They're for, it's marine wire. So marine wire is going to be red and yellow. And the reason why it's red and yellow instead of red and black has to do with AC. AC home wire, we have, if you guys have ever done home, you know, you have a copper which or green, which is earth or ground. Then you have the white, which is neutral. And then you have black, which is hot. <laughs> mm -hmm. So in a lot of boats, there is both AC and DC. So AC being the more bigger, I guess. I don't know, yeah. or dumber guys. I, no offense if you're an electrician. I don't know. I don't know the, the the reasoning behind it. But however that happened is DC ground, which is typically black, got bumped to yellow so that it would not be confused with AC hot. Um, that's why they did that. So in a boat that's wired properly mm -hmm. you'll see red which is dc 12 volts and you'll see positive and you'll see yellow which is dc 12 volts negative yep. and that's why it's like that and now we know we've all learned something today oh whose head hurts where we learn <laughs> i know exactly <laughs> we learned how irritated dean is today colombia um, in the house what's but up yeah. oscar so the plan is to, we'll figure out how we're gonna give some of these away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's super cool. So that'll be everyone's Valentine's Day present. So you know someone asked, we're gonna give away some for Valentine's Day? There you go, we're gonna give away calendars. Perfect. Ah, Fernando. Um, yes. You just got a... Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 it's Oscar. He's like, hey, I oh. send you my address. Oh. Yeah, bro. Totally. I mean, you know, as the... Um, noob of the year awards yes. recipient oh, recipient i can't speak 
Uh, you should definitely get oh, one. Oh, totally. You should totally Rookie get one. Of the year, totally. Uh, Michigan here, it's cold but sunny. That's kind of saying like it's... I don't know. Something I was thinking poop and smelly. I, you know, of course it's cold. It's Michigan. Oh, God. It's cold here, too, actually. I'm not going to lie. Oh, um, man. What happened? What uh, all right. Todd, speed the XV9. Or the LC? Oh, the LC. LC. Uh, yeah, the LC. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And it's uh, five, 1300. Yeah, it's, it's 1300. 1300. Yeah, you're getting, yeah. giving it an extra 100 there. Is that just the tip for the thought? Hey, no, the LC <laughs> is for sure the new Audio Control 5 channel. It is by far the new 5 channel on the block, and it is is the new bad bitch. Um, <sighs> please answer my DM. Uh, Patrick, if you're going to ask anything here I, I was gonna say Every I, day I don't here. read Instagram DMs no. not gonna uh, lie also on Facebook I just I don't have 30. I don't have time YouTube or the on patients. Saturdays yeah mm, yeah huh. I don't know um, there has to be a better way hey guys I won in a uh, hey guys I won in a thousand days of Christmas but I haven't or hasn't arrived any chance I could get tracking information Greece from Mexico um Yes, send me an email back to that, and I will check to see how it got shipped. It could have gone off in the post office, which means it might. It probably went off in the post office, which means it's probably not there yet, just because USPS is really, really yeah. slow. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't freak out too much yet. But um, yes, email me back on yeah. the email that I sent you, and I'll, I'll check in to see how that went out. Um, hey, from Panama. What's up? I would love one of those calendars. I know, right? Yeah. I would love one, too. Oh. Um, can a new audio control 5 channel amp run 2JL 10W3? Okay. A question like that. Yes, technically it can run them. It's 500 watts. It can run any speaker you connect to it. Mm -hmm. uh, is that enough power to deliver the output that you want is right. the question you're trying to ask. Yes. And yes. that is that would be no. probably not, but I don't know. It depends on how much bass you want. So some people... They don't need an overwhelming amount of bass. Some people need an overwhelming amount of bass. All right. So it's 500. If that's enough you just to give you the volume. Yeah, if that's enough to give you the volume you want, wonderful. Mm -hmm. If it's not, then do the old faithful. Do the 4.800 and the 1.800. So uh, that's that's kind of that's kind of thing. <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> and uh, that, that this is cool. Um, anything new coming from you guys video wise? No more F one fifties. I, you know, we're not filming this. Right. I can tell you right now. No, actually, we we haven't really been. I I don't know if we filmed F one fifties. Well, actually, or not. Florida just passed a law that is no more cars allowed here. Only F one fifties and. Oh Jeeps, yeah. So that's why. Yeah. Does the auto control LC convert balanced <laughs> speaker signal to unbalanced? Honestly, I have no idea. I've never asked that question. Um, I mean, if it's if you're talking about like low level signal, like if you have a low level signal, then no, it's it's not made for anything low level. The only the only audio control that is made for low level would either be the the new LC One I, which is either low mm -hmm. level or high level because it's a line driver but the units themselves are not line drivers and i don't know if the matrix <clears throat> is well the matrix is line level in line level out so you might be able to use the matrix also hmm mm. that's something for tech support i would definitely give them a call but if if i didn't answer the question you were wondering um or please answer my dm oh yeah yeah sorry i can't miss that one all right going back wow just go Come way. on, guys. F-150s are my favorite. They're <laughs> our favorites, too. Really? Hey, we just have one. That's an F-250. It's That's not the same. Stale. It's not the same. It's got crappy speaker locations. Let's yeah, be honest. How true. they they that just they suck. <clears throat> um, I know we don't sell or we don't carry any sound down boxes. Trucks? No, no. It says, do you carry any boxes uh, for six and a half inch sound downs for trucks? The answer to that is, I think, yes. Does he have sixes or no, they all eights? No, that's eights. They're all eights. eights. Sorry, they're all eights. That's eights. They're all eights. My bad. Yeah. Uh, but yes, we do have them for eights, though. Okay, cool. I bought an LC, LCI1. Yeah, that is yeah, that's that is that is the one high-level to low-level adapter I think is going to really, once people figure out what it actually does, 
is going to be super cool and one of those things that you just want to have in the shop or, or around because mm -hmm. it will do so much mm -hmm. um it, it's it's going to be a cool problem yeah. it's going to be a cool tool and that's really what all these things are anyways in my mind is just tools and, they, and i think are, that okay. tool is a double-ended hammer yeah it's gonna break shit up anyways What's your opinion on two kicker L712s on an F-150? Ooh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm fine with one, but L7, two, two is huh? awesome. Ooh. We were jamming out to Haley's this weekend. Totally. I almost wanted to go live when we were cruising in Haley's car because we were playing some old school hip hop, mm -hmm. and uh, it was just, just, uh, just made me, made me wish I had a sub in my car. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I was like, damn, I wish I just had a sub in my car because it was just. I gotta get, I gotta get something in there. I had two subs. Shut up. Yep. Uh, what kind of sound? Dentine is easiest to work with. I mean, I'm guessing you mean dampening. Um, dampening. Uh, honestly, usually the, the more expensive, <laughs> the more expensive stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the more expensive stuff is usually the easier to work with. Um, the ground zero stuff is super, super, easy. super nice to work super with. Easy. Yes. Um, yes. The, but the this, the road kill is pretty nice. Oh no no no! I'm yeah. not saying. I mean, we use the one. two. We use this yeah. the ground zero or the road kill, and they're both equally fun for fernando to play with oh totally so the um the ground zero is more flexible you know like yeah definitely so let's put a silver either, either way road kill or to. ground zero single sub box for a rear seat of the 2020 ram f-150 suggestions um i don't know of anybody who makes it i mean we we had someone that made one but they went out of business um, but I mean, if you could fit an L7, an L710 T back there, or the Rockford T1 T, mm -hmm. those those are both super super awesome. For Ground Zero for the win, Bobby says. Say hello um, to Noah. Hello, Noah. Hi, Noah. How you doing? Um, uh, no, I have not used that. The only time we ever vary from the two brands that we use is if somebody brings them in. Um, we don't really go outside of outside of the box on that one too much. Um, so. All right, single not, so Have y'all? Oh, have you tried the second skin? Have we done second skin? Didn't that the one you was mm -mm. that the no? That was different, right? That was the other one. That was like sound skin, right, or some? I don't honestly know. There's so much skin going on. We have no skin in the game. Um, I, I, like I said, when it comes to to that stuff. It really, people have yeah. to bring it in and we'll use it. And he, he'll either complain oh, or he won't. Always complain. Yeah, yeah. We don't ever, you know, we don't ever write it down because we're not that smart. Not exactly. All right, what do you got? You got one more and then we got to get uh, back to work. All right, 2017 Camaro. Yes. I'm pro. Toss link to the JL VXI 600 watts or 800 watts debating what components sent to use and whether. To have rear fill, worn, meter speakers combination. Okay. I like the rear fill idea mm -hmm. because I mean you can put rear fill in the side panels on that one, mm -hmm. which I think is spectacular. Yeah. Um, speakers to use depends on the type of music you listen to. I personally like Morel. Just go. saying, yes. you know. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know what your budget is, but you know some nice Morels up in there. Uh, last VXI system we did, we put on some Audio Frogs, yes. which was whoo, really nice. so nice, so nice. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot to choose from. And with that, we're going to end 5 Minutes of 5 Star right here. Right, so guys. we hope you guys enjoyed today. We'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow is Thursday. Oh, God, I can't wait for it tomorrow. Woo. <laughs> All right, guys, you have a great rest of your day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, Bye. guys. What are you doing, Fernando? Rain. Yeah. Just watching this, it's hypnotic. Who likes the movie up? Anybody? Yeah. I know, right? No, it's not going on a subwoofer enclosure, that is for sure. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How's everybody doing? We're doing it. Doing it? Let's go over here. Let's go towards your bench. It's not so loud over there. That's right. It's fun, it's fun to, not fun to, eh. The laser makes noise, let's just call it like that. Yeah. Um, 
today was a fun day. Uh, we have nothing. We have nothing here right at the moment, uh, yeah, which, um, which is kind of odd. Uh, the the job we were trying to do, uh, apparently somebody didn't do enough research on, so that got canceled. Uh, wow, 43 chili here. Eesh, yuck. Ah, oh, hey, there he is. Cool. What's up, Mel? How's it going? Morel is also in the house. Hey, Morel. And Tommy, who? 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 Who is in the house? Who? Tommy. Who? Uh, cord get done? Uh, the cord was done in April. <laughs> so, I mean, you know. Uh, Helix Mini DSP or Kicker Key 404, what's your, what's your choice? I mean, they're not even the same thing. I mean, they're not even close. I mean, obviously, if you get a Kicker Key, you're done. And that's just put it in and you, you, you're done. You don't have to do anything. If you get a mini DSP, then you need an amplifier and you have to tune it. So they're not, they're not for the same. They don't even play on the same playground. Um, so they, they, and they both have their own unique features about them. Mm -hmm. It just depends what you want to do and what your plans are. Hey guys, what's the best thing to keep steady voltage in a system with a lot of watch? Batteries and a big ass alternator, but mainly batteries. The more more reserve you have, the better you are. So up from Trinidad and Tobago, but yeah, you need power. Power, you gotta have some place to store it. The more batteries you have, the less fluctuation you run into. Mm -hmm. um, so stiffening capacitors used to be really nice. But some form of reserve power, whether it be batteries or uh, those cool little caps or lithium cells or whatever you have, you need to have the place where it's at. 17 here and another four inches of snow in Michigan. Oh my God, That's Tommy. Crazy. Why? Well, Why? When, did he, when, what day he posted like Who no cares? snow here? It's just, it's like, oh. It just makes my bones hurt, man. I mean, it's beautiful today. It's gonna be like 60 something tonight going running. Oh yeah, I mean, it was 50 something last night, which was fabulous. Um, hey man, I can't wait to see those amplifiers installed and everything. Who are we talking about? The amplifiers that we signed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. he's almost yeah. done. Yeah. Elias! I need to call him next week. I need to do the thing this weekend and then we'll schedule that. Elias! Dean is gonna call you next week. Uh, how do you store all your videos? Well, actually, that's pretty easy. Um, hang on. Uh, uh, let me walk over here to the laser because I actually just was. Uh, hold on. Let's let's look at the laser and see how up is doing. Ooh, almost got the house. Look at the little house. So that's that's what we're making. Okay, hold on. Let me grab this. All right. So we have a whole system in, could you unzip that for me? So we have a whole system on how things go as far as video storage. So this is a Lacey, you know, tumble drive. It's got the cool, this is drive number two. I always write the date in which I bought them on here. And what we have is, so this, we have card packs. So take home full. So this is telling me that these are ready to go and they have videos on them. Now over here, we have this one, which is good to use. So if it's in there, we can, we can film on it. If it's in here, it's questionable. And then in my backpack, I have another one. So when I'm done, so all these have yeah. videos on them right yeah. now that need to be uploaded yeah. onto yeah. this. So this has subfolders on it for a year. And then each in each year has a listing of the date that the video was filmed and then what the video is about. So, yeah. and it's the whole date. So it's like 01302021. And then once it gets used, it gets a red dot to yeah. tell me that it's, it's already done and I can throw it away if I like. Now the finished videos, once they're all done and finished, they go on Lacey number one, which is in my backpack and that's it. Now all the, the B-roll, all the extra, all the footage that's not used, all that stuff. Bye. Bye, bye, bye Felicia. Because we film way too much stuff to keep all of the, the yes. nonsense. But that's, pardon me, that's essentially how everything gets broken down. Fun. And I'm debating on whether or not I'm gonna keep the Instagram stuff. Cause like an Instagram video like the, 
five minutes with five star recap video that this is going to be part of mm -hmm. those are typically like 10 to 12 gig files so they get really big yeah um so it's a lot of fun there uh, i asked you last week about capping a tweeter with a wid is there any way to tone down the tweeter you'd have to build a passive crossover network like a 12 db passive crossover network and then add in a resistor so that you'd be able to tone it down like negative 3 db at that point um yeah you're gonna have to get pretty sophisticated what you may want to try doing this is just an old trick we used to do back in the day put a piece of carpet over it like grill cloth you know like grill cloth on a home cabinet Put a piece of carpet over it and like or box carpet that'll attenuate it, it will it'll attenuate the tweeter down believe it or not i mean it, it, it'll work but otherwise yeah or get an amp but yeah okay let's move on 2018 um, malibu factory radio subs cuts out when my car stops yeah any advice Stop start. stop start yeah it's stop start and it's not stop start compliant the amplifier so, is not stop start so what, what you want to do is um get rid of stop start so stop start is a new headache one of the new headaches for the aftermarket world basically what happens is if you're banging at a stoplight your engine shuts off when you start car goes to start back up now it only stays off for like what is it 30 seconds mm -hmm. it can only stay off for like 30 seconds there's a there's a rule dot rule on that one but the problem is when that car goes to start back up, your air conditioner's running, your headlights could have been on, your system is pounding, more than likely your car is going to dip down to 9 volts, 8.5 volts sometimes. Mm -hmm. Amplifiers have a minimum operating voltage, and it's basically like going in protection. So if your voltage is dipping down like that, Shut up. it shuts off. So when your car starts in the morning, the stereo is not on yet, but it's already on and running. Now it's going to just start like anything else. Well, Elias and Tommy are having a wonderful conversation in the background. I just, I just <laughs> want to go to the restroom that they go in. <laughs> I know, right? Um, so what happens is, is the amplifier shuts down because it, it basically goes and protects from low battery voltage. There's really not much option out there for avoiding stop start. Some people will be like, well, if you had a second battery in the back, well, yeah, that's a temporary fix because once that battery goes low, then it stops it's gonna working do it's going to do the same thing yeah. so it's a band-aid so you have to check if you they make a bypass for your car or or get amplifiers that are stop start compliant yeah so yeah. for example like one of the reasons we did the review of the kicker cs amplifier was because the cs amplifiers are stop start compliant yeah. they can work down to nine eight and a half volts uh -huh. um Helix amplifiers, uh, amplifiers the yeah. Audison Prima stuff. Mm -hmm. There are amplifiers out there that will do it, but when you get into the big stuff, not so much. Uh, do you have experience with the Brazilian amps like Terra amps and Claren EQs and crossovers? Uh, I don't know anything about the Terra amps. Sound digital? Yes. Know a lot about them. Um, wonderful. We know a few guys. In uh, the we year. know a few guys. <laughs> uh, Tommy who? Um, Elias what? Elias what? Um, anyways, like we know those, Claren EQs, the seven band that they've been making for 200 years now that pretty much everyone makes, noisy as hell, mm -hmm. not a fan, um, and passive crossovers. I mean, it's not, it's not, they're all re, redone stuff from the early 90s, late, late, late 80s. Um, they've been around forever. Definitely not the quality that they once were. I don't know. Still think buying a DSP of any kind is going to be better. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you like knobs. Hi from Queensland, Australia. What's hey. going on, man? So, yeah. All right. El Camino. Yeah. Has oh. 3.5 full range. Yes. In the dash. Yeah. What can I replace them with? I don't think people make 3.5 full range for less than a million bucks. That's not true. It's not true. Actually, it's funny. Today we just shot a video on a set of the Kenwood Exelon 3.5s. Mm -hmm. um, so check out Kenwood Exelon. But there's a lot of companies out there that make three and a halfs. Now, what's unique about yours is that you need something that has a very flat tweeter. So the Kenwood Exelon. Do you remember the monologue? I 
camera. Just head over to Kenwood, but you need something that has a tweeter that sits recessed down in the mid-range. That's exactly what the Kenwood Exelon 3.5s are. Most 3.5s, the tweeter protrudes about a half inch, anywhere between a quarter to a half inch, which isn't going to work in your car because of the, the way the grill sits perfectly flat. So something like a punch. Yeah, so definitely check out the Kenwoods. They're not that sorry, expensive. I'm I'm, sorry, I know they're under 100 bucks. So. So there you go. Tommy says Ground Zero has a slim four inch. Well, so, it's a four inch. These are three and a half. These are straight three and a half. It's an El Camino, man. This is not a four just inch. Just cut, cut the other half. Cut inch. the other half inch off. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, how does the P3 do in a Fox box? Uh, honestly, we use them in the Fox boxes all the time. So we either use we've used. The P3 shallows, mm -hmm. the T1 shallows. Ooh, like the T1 shallows, like in the Titan box. Yep. That funky Titan box, we put some two T1 shallows in that. We've done P1 shallows. I'm sorry, P3 shallows. But yeah, no, and P3 uh, deeps. Fury right there. KFC X3C. That's the go. ones. Thank you. Yep, those um, are the ones you want. Also, for the guy, they asked about the Jeep. You know, the two and a halves. Kenwood make two and a half for a jeep uh -huh. it's a three inch jeep is not a two and a half jeep Jesus. yeah it's oh that's yeah. a two inch uh -huh. yeah they also make the same thing it's a it's a two instead mm -hmm. of a three in the same model number yep. but yeah those that's that's um how can you tell if you need to put my tweeter out of phase with the mid base well most of the time if you have a passive crossover in there they've already taken care of that for you in the way they've designed the crossover so if you're if you're using passives then more than likely you have like a 12 db crossover for the tweeter 18 db for the mid-range or somewhere it's flipped or 6 db for the tweeter mm -hmm. and a 12 db for the mid-range um very rarely, so they've already done all that for you. If they're using a 12 dB exact high-low, meaning let's say the 3200 high, 3200 low, yeah. then the tweeter will be out of polarity for you, or they'll, they'll flip the tweeter for you already, and when you polarity test them, the tweeter will be moving backwards from the mid-range, because they'll have already done that. A lot of times you'll see that in a coaxial, believe it or not. Um, but I... Yeah, I mean, there again, it's one of those things you could try mm -hmm. just to see, but most of the time you don't have to worry about it. If, if it's a passive, you've already done it. If it's active, you definitely don't need to do it because you can choose the, the crossover point that you want unless it's a 12 dB crossover. If it's a 12 dB crossover on an amplifier and you're setting the frequencies to where they're exactly the same spot, then yes, you're going to flip the tweeters right away. All right. Did you see the 2020 one? 2021 Camry Hybrid with floating screen. Got to keep OME radio, OEM radio and go high level to an amp. What pieces did you need? Non-JBL, Camry. I would do a kicker key lock. Kicker key lock, man. It's the best. That's going to be your best option for that car. Um, front channels go right out of the kicker key lock into the, you know, right into the two front channels. You could probably pick up a T harness for that. Um, I don't know if Metro makes that one or not. I know they do. Somebody's got that. I've seen it. We've used it. I don't know if it was that or the new pack harness that we used. So also... They might make a Raider replacement harness for it. But on the 2021, the speaker wires are off in their own little 8-pin plug. It's really convenient. So Ground Zero also make a 2-inch. So Ground Zero does know. also make a 2-inch. Yes, they do. Uh, it's just that 3.5 that we were talking about for the El Camino that shallow tweeter is not something that a lot of companies make. Most of the time, the tweeter stick out about a quarter inch, but. How's my laser thing coming over here? Uh, what are your thoughts about the J, ah, dude, it's sitting right there behind that amp. It's right there waiting to go in my car. I should be doing that right now, but I want to go home. Okay. Oh, it's nice. Here, let's take a look at the up. Haley's a big up fan, so this is this is her. I can only go up a little bit. You can only go up a little bit. Yeah. How did you guys get interested and started in car audio? Um, mine started in high school. Mm -hmm. A buddy of mine. 
you know, I would we'd ride to school. You know, you, you hitch a ride to school with your friends. The first guy to get a car, right? Isn't that what it always, you know, it's like, I don't want to ride the bus anymore. I got a car now. Oh, hot damn. The thing we've been talking about forever, stopping and getting breakfast and going through drive throughs all, all the, the standard crap. Mm-hmm. Um, so when we started parking in the parking lot, there was a group of guys that, you know, all hung out and they all had stereos. One guy in particular has this little B210 Datsun that just freaking hammered. He had, he was real, he was real secretive about it. It was so funny. He had, a, he had an old school, the original Hercules, the amp, not the line. He had the old school original Hercules with 215s crammed in the back of this box. So this thing just hammered. Um, they were three little Samoan guys. So it's like this thing, it was lowered until they got out. Elias. Didn't start car audio. <laughs> oh, I know, right? It's, I wish. Wow, um, say you're all. Wow. I know, I know. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, anyway, so, you know, bass was it, man. I was like, oh my gosh, what is this What is this loud, obnoxious music? Because I'm not a big music fan. I wasn't, I wasn't into music like everyone. And then, you know, we started listening to, like, like Run DMC came out with Ray's, uh, you know, Peter Piper picked a pep. Yeah, run rep rhyme Humpty Dumpty. Audio systems. What's um, up? So that, like, we knew that music existed because I had it on cassette, and then like, right about now, Rob Bass and DJ Easy okay. Rock, um, like we were jamming out to that, and it was like hearing that bass note, and then we rode in this girl's car. This is funny. We rode in this girl's car who had she had a Camaro and she had two twelves and a baffle board in the back of a Camaro, and we're just like, this is the coolest thing ever. And that just kind of like, I want to do this. I want to I wanna have this Beastie bass Boys. thing. Oh, Beastie Boys, License in the Ill. But, so you got to remember, I was listening to that on headphones, bro. That was like, we went back to that. Yeah, we, had to go, we had to go back to that. Oh, shitty headphones too, man. Like, you know, we didn't know what sound quality was. We were just listening to the lyrics. We didn't even know that had drop. Yeah. Um, so about 10th grade, 11th grade, you know, back in 88 was yeah i know right um we found this thing called bass yeah and so when i got my first car i had a walkman a set of peerless tweeters and a set of subwoofers that we made out of my desk and some old pampers boxes because we ran out of room for my desk and we didn't even know about airspace we just just nailed stuff together and it would have it would have been a fail for sure it would have been i mean duct tape drywall screws sealing holes what are those man just duct tape the seams together I mean, it was it was wonderful and you you heard that first bass note and you're just like oh this is so cool um i mean we broke everything we could to do car audio i mean we didn't know shit i mean that was t- nothing like aluminum foil around a fuse hey if it kept us playing you got it baby yeah you know but that back then you know we had magazines that was it so you had magazines. There was no internet. I know it's. I feel so. so I feel so damn old when I say wow. that. It was like, you know, you just you went to a stereo shop, and to be honest with you, most stereo shops, even though it was cool to hang out of them, if you weren't a hanger on or, you know, there's they're still douchebags. I mean, it wasn't like the stereo shop guys were fun and cool. Some of them were, like we were when I when I started working a shop because I remember what it was to be like treated like an idiot. What's up, Bobby? So you know, I always. Any guy that wanted to hang out at the stereo shop, we'd let him hang out, and we'd have fun with him. But, you know, it was the music that got me into it. And, and like, you know, everyone has their, their, you know, like Jeff was like, oh, sound quality, sound quality. Mine was just loud, obnoxious crap. Like, I wanted to sit behind a car and have Soccer Mom just all pissed off at me because I was dropping some serious bass, you know? All right. Yeah, go ahead. How did you get into it? Oh, I just walk in the door. Okay. Hey, what's going on? Can I get a job? <laughs> um, this has got to be better than Carabas. <laughs> I'm getting back into the car audio. I'm old school. Always love having the Alpine EQ. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to wire into the modern day system or just go with the DSP. Actually, there's no reason why you can't do both, all right? And, and let me explain why. The DSP is the fix-all of everything. It, it, it's pretty much what it's turned into. You give me a DSP, and we have a chance. We have a chance to do whatever we want. We have equalization for every channel. We have all the stuff that we can do with the DSP. 
Some e DSPs have what's called global EQ, mm -hmm. where you can adjust every channel at once. Uh, you can pick channels. So you do your first tune, which is you turn, tune every speaker for its location. Mm -hmm. And then you can click either a global EQ or you can pair EQs. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them don't though. You really get, that's an advanced feature. So you have to spend a lot of money on a DSP to get that. Yeah. So if you buy like an old school Alpine slide rule EQ, what are you looking for? Where was the, um, the EQ this Jackie gave you? It's not an EQ, it's an RTA. Well, I mean. Yeah, it's not an, it's not an EQ though. Anyways, yeah. if, you, if you pair up a old school regular EQ with an R, with a DSP, you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get your global EQ, so you can go in and do a little bit of adjustment and have some fun, but behind, so you won't have to do a lot, but behind it you'll have your full EQ'd system that is your, your baseline. Mm -hmm. So yeah, go to town. I don't see any reason why you can't do that. I mean, it'd be no different as if we put a DSP on an aftermarket radio, which we do a lot of, because why not? <clears throat> I mean, it's going to make it sound better. What's up, man? How you doing? Okay. I mean, you know, be better, but it's what it is. Okay. What do you got? Uh, friends, 20, yeah, keep, tw friends, 2018 F250, he doesn't listen, insists on using LC7i, base system, small screen, will this work? Base system, small screen, yeah, it'll work. Um, yeah, oh, if, it's just a, if it's just a base system, you'll be fine. You can use that. I mean, it's not the end of the world by any stretch of measure. But make sure he gets the blue LGDs. So with his LC7i, you know, I mean, obviously he's, he's feeling special. Make sure he gets a set of these, the blue LGDs. He has to have these to plug into the LC7i. But if he hasn't bought the LC7i yet, like if you, if you can save him from buying the LC7i, have him spend a little bit more money, you're still gonna get a cool audio control piece, but get the LCQ1. For all you guys that keep asking about that old school EQ, boom, here you go, right here, man. Six bands for your highs, five bands for your lows. It's 11 band EQ, oh yeah. And then you get six bands for the rear, AccuBase. So this, this is an LC7i. This is an LCQ1 and you can actually do something with it. So way big fan of the LCQ1. Oh, look at the time. All right, let's check in on up and see what it's doing. It's still cutting. Oh, it's almost to the top. What's that? Yeah, it's cutting the balloons. Okay, just got with DSP or just go with with a like DSP. I mean, EQ. yeah, yeah, I mean, totally, totally. I mean, obviously the DSP is the way to go. It's got everything you need in it, but. Totally. Now, I mean, keep in mind. Ooh. You have the EQ in, some, in most of these DSPs. Well, you like have a, to have an EQ in a DSP. No, 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 like an app. Oh, for they, the phone? You can go, you not know. all of them. No, well, well, I'm just saying most of them. A lot of the cheaper ones do. It's, it's funny, yeah. the cheaper ones do, the more expensive ones typically don't. Oh, cool mode. How you like me now? Ooh, I was just jamming out some cool mode the other night, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, on the audio control, you use ferrules or no? No. Oh, no. God, on a Phoenix connector? God, no. Not I, in the Phoenix, in the power and the ground. The power and ground, you definitely do, but on a Phoenix connector, God, no, please stop. Um, it's a compression terminal, so it, it, it compresses the wire in. I hate when, I, I just, it's so annoying to see people use them. For those of you guys who don't know what we're talking about, I happen to have some right here, so I will show you. Um, this is why I said I didn't need the other ones the other day. <laughs> All right, so there's two types of connectors that Audio Control uses, and I will show you both. Hold on, there we go, my fingers can actually work. So this is your Phoenix connector, right? And what you have is there's a screw on top. They're really tight next to one another. And as this pulls, it pulls in flat. So I suggest tinning the wires and pull it in flat. The problem you run into, and then this is their mini Phoenix connector, which, God, yeah, there's so, but, okay. So the problem you run into is you can't fit a big one in there, but we'll come over here and we'll grab this and we'll grab this. This is what I always see. I always see these little 18 gauge ones in there. And it's like, come on, seriously? Now, if you want to do it, remove this off, this red thing, because 
what happens is, is as you sit there and you put multiples of these in, you know, it, the big red heads with shrink wrap and all that, they start sitting off like this. And well, they're not making a great connection anyways. So, and then if you go with a 16 gauge wire with this head on it, um, oh, actually it's not even gonna fit until you compress it down. Mm -hmm. So I, I am, oh, oh, it's off. I'm not a fan of using ferrules with those. Here, can you hold this for a second? Of course. Thank you, you can turn it around towards yourself. Do you guys wanna build some Legos right now? I can show you how. Show me what you have. All right, I hope this worked. Yeah. Brushing the hair? Yeah. Mm. I'm always sick. You're always sick? Yeah. yeah. You're a sick individual. I'm sick individual. I like that one. So this is our second go around on this because I didn't like the first one. And I don't know if I'm going to like this one either, but... I'll give it a try. You guys think scraping uh, off clean wire ones? No, so. I haven't put the morels, man. Believe me. Uh, was, we're, we're working on that. Today should have been a good day, but... Well, the plan was to do it this week. Yes. But this week got away from us, as it often does. Uh, I mean... And then we just found... It has out. to be next week. Oh, it's definitely... It I'm, has I'm, to I'm, be I'm next over week. it. I want yeah. it in. And I will let you know. Yeah, oh no, you guys will, as soon as, we're going to have a whole morale week. So yes, yes. As soon as, as soon as we get them in and get the video done, we're going to do a whole morale week of fun and excitement and just go to town because party time for sure. Um, hey, Dean. Yes. What's your opinion on the Axis DSPT harness? Looking for the GM31. What is my opinion on it? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's... It works. I mean, yeah. we use it. Um, I have. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why not? Um, if you can't, what's a T harness? I was gonna say I don't. What's a T harness? Well, no, no. What I was gonna say is um, the GM, the DGM three. Mm -hmm. I think is the same thing. The 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 um, IData DGM three harness might be the same harness. Um. Yeah. I think it is. If you can't find that one. Well, you'd rather new school amplifiers or old school ones? New school. I hate old school. Old school is nostalgic. It's fun. I like hanging the shit on the wall like the 225 HCC over there. Yeah. You know, that's cool. Totally. But I'm not, I'm, I don't want to run. I, although the guy, this guy came in today with a Rockford 650 that he's running in his car. And I was like, Jesus, man, are you kidding me? I can't believe you're still using this. He's like, I had it in my closet. So yeah. It doesn't have a lot of power. I was like, yeah, I know. I have an amplifier that's a quarter of the size of it that would outperform this one so badly. Let me get over Oh, I'm here. sorry. He asked about the Axis DSP. Oh. I don't know. It's. Um, well, I mean, for the GM? No. Eh. Well, I mean, you can do. All right, so come over here. What are we going? Right here. So if you have a GM, uh, check over at iData and see if the DGM3 will work for your car. If it will, just get the DGM3 and then get the DSR1. Uh -huh. That works. We know that works. Yeah. We've done that. All right. Put that in there. Move it around. This is like Steve Mead light. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, oh, that's way better. I put the... Put the carpet back in the back. Yeah. Oh, shit. Make yeah. sure you Make poke sure your eye. Myself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh. That looks, that looks, that's a much better. Yeah, it looks better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other one, where do you have the other one? I don't know what I did with it. 
God only knows. Yeah, I didn't like that one. That one looks way cooler. Yeah. Balloons from up. Yep. Awesome. Haley, be happy. Cool. I know, right? Okay. Well, enough of that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I that's the morale. Oh, the, the morale would light, light up, but I don't think it will. All right. Uh, light it on fire and let's see what it does. Add a, it would make a terrible smell and then Haley would be pissed and then she would torture your daughter when you're here next month. Hmm. Just saying. <laughs> uh, will you do an install on Tom Brady's car? W or would I do? Will you do? Probably not. Would I do? Eh, maybe. Well, he has, I mean, a, he has a Raptor. Does he have a Raptor? Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. God, if he's got a Raptor, I'm it's all about that. It's a totally F-150. Yeah, F-150 all day long. Yeah, I don't, yeah, we can, yeah, there's, <laughs> but. Hey, I was building something. Yeah, you're done playing. Jesus. Uh, shout out to the Bay Area. Fire. Uh, Morel Vertus Nano Carbon, what do you think about them? Oh, dude, let me tell you what. So eventually we'll get to the end of this Honda Accord. And man, so originally when we did the Honda Accord, we didn't know what we were gonna do. Like we didn't know going into it that we were gonna do the Vertus Nano Carbons. For those of you who don't know what those are, we just so happen to have a set here because they are one of my favorite speakers. And they're, they're what's, we're, talking about right now in the uh the honda and like, we were kind of you know it was the first set we had done and we were like how are these going to work i mean there's nothing going on there look at that and the, the whole motivating factor for doing these over the, the regular virtues was that we weren't going to have to cut anything these were just literally going to screw into place and see what happens um, and if we didn't like them, then obviously the video would have changed and we would have put the regular ones in there because that's not how it works. I, you know, Jesus, man, what do you say? These things are just so unrealistically good sounding. Um, and then if you, like, here's the mid-range. So uh, the mid-range is actually taller than the six and a half, but... That's because it has this air chamber here in the back. This is the enclosure for it. So this, think of this as a box located on the back, and then this is the little membrane to port the speaker. So super cool there. Um, yeah. All those classic cars that you don't have space for it. Yeah, great for classic cars, but dude, anything. Anything, yeah. anything you just want good sound. Mm -hmm. So there is that little vented area there. They put this plug in the back, mm -hmm. so it's got some foam. This is... This isn't by accident, this is by design. They put this in here and the density of the foam all plays into the power handling and the design of the magnet structure for this. Um, it, it's, it's unique and the voice coil on this is huge. Like you see the silver piece here. This is the outside, the, the voice coil is on the inside of that. So the voice coil is literally this big around, you know? I think uh, it's two point something inches. So it's huge. Very nice, very sexy. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, I think the mid might fit in my sale on F-150. I mean, you have the depth. You have the depth. Cause like, there's a lot of, surprisingly a lot of depth on the F-150. It's just, I mean, it, you're gonna have to custom make something because it's just not like gonna cut in there and call it a day. Um, I don't think that's gonna happen, but you know, 2.2. Yeah, there you go. Hi from Calgary, Alberta, home Calgary. of helm of the snow and also uh, uh, MSC. So that's where uh, that's where the helix the helix comes from here in the uh, northern hemisphere. It comes from Calgary. Mobile Solutions, Calgary. Yeah. Uh, Larry Penn and the guys up there killing it. If you've Jason Degas. If, if you've never been there, I, dog, dog. I, w I would try to go because, yeah. like, I've only seen pictures, and it's like if I'm ever in Calgary, I'm going to see Larry Penn's oh, place. Because totally, totally. um, it just looks freaking awesome. Beautiful. Plus, it's it's just a well oiled machine of awesome car audio uh, What do you think of the JL Marine speakers? M3 6.5s. 
I don't know their model structure, but I know that, you know, the, the JL Marine stuff is like the benchmark for Marine Audio. Um, you know, when Rockford redid the Marine Audio this year, um, that was the, that it was like, listen, if you're not going to be as good or sound as good as these, then what's the point? So, what's the point, man? Um, you know, they've really, it's the thorn in everyone's side, so, you know. I'm assuming it's wonderful. Ever install in a 2012 GTI? Yeah, of course. Um, greetings from Toronto. Ooh, CN Tower. That was a real butthole pucker there. If you've never. What the Lahara Jalisco. Oh, there you go. You'd love you. You like high Jalisco. things, so you. If we ever go, like, if oh, man, see, Canada's so big, but it'd be neat to go to Toronto. And because you would have, no, no, you just go into the CN Tower. If, probably can't right now but going all the way up to the top man it's like can you jump from there um if you want to die i mean yeah of course would. but you know when we were in the seattle space needle that wasn't so bad the cn tower mm -hmm. no nah, i just i couldn't handle that i'm just like mti can make you pillars mti yes. can make you pillars and do a fabulous job on your yeah. f-150 yeah. doing it we know this because Mark, our good buddy at iData, he had them make his pillars for his Elates. And the Elate at the time was using a very similar mid-range, and they, won't, they turned out fabulous. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Hollywood, Florida. I have a 94 Chevy extended cab truck and am running 212 JLW1s with a JL JD501 monoblock. I have a really loud, clear sound, but... Only when the windows doors are open. Yes, that's air exchange, meaning the subwoofers are starving for air when your windows are up. <sighs> that's old school base problem, man. It's an old school base problem. Um, those trucks really didn't vent real well. So you're not getting enough air into the cabs. When you crack your window down, you're, ex you're exchanging the air volume of the vehicle which is now allowing the subwoofers to become louder because you're giving them more air to create more sound. You can't create bass in a vacuum. So one of the, uh, in space, they can't hear you scream because there's no oxygen. Oh, look at so that. So yeah. you have to have air to make bass. What are we looking at? No, somebody say. Oh, Space Needle? Uh, yeah. Yeah, look this, at that, babe. I got to go and this is all Fernando got. <laughs> hey, I'm perfectly fine. Yeah. Dude. He's a big fan of the Seahawks, so she done worked all the brothers on the Seahawks. <laughs> no, that was a uh, that was a uh, line from Sir Mix a Lot. Anyways, um, oh, Larry has done two systems for me. That's nice. awesome, dude. Larry's a Larry Penn that we're talking about from Calgary. He's a great teacher. Like you know. Mm -hmm. I can't say enough about the guy. I just had a blast. Um, I've been to, I've, I've talked to him privately, personally on, on that, but, you know, I, I've sat through a class or two where he was the guy talking, and it's just, it's it's real refreshing to hear his take on the industry. Um, you know, he's yeah. one of the guys I really look up, look, look up yes, to, yes. and his thoughts and his ideas and how he likes to see things go. He's a super smart guy. Um, and you know, and you, and you want, it's like, who, who inspires me? He's one of the guys on, on a very short list of people that it's like, yeah, yeah. He's one of the guys. He's a good guy. Oh, he's definitely yeah. a good guy. Um, the list is not long. That is for sure. How did the Hertz Neo speaker sound? Fernando. Wow. We actually shot the video on that. So we, mm -hmm. we have a whole video. Um, he made me turn him down. Dude, that was a lot of Twitter. Like... 107 dB. It's loud. Like one watt, one meter, 107 dB, baby. <laughs> no, that was too like, like literally. It's like he made me turn him down. I can you tell guys you. Guys, gonna see the video. You're gonna but... see the video. One of the nice. Okay, so one of the nice things about going with a a, a super efficient tweeter like that <laughs> with the DSP active. Active. You can. You got to be active. Mm -hmm. Is being able to go in and adjust the tweeter. Yep. Um. Because when you can tone that tweeter down to a normal level and bring it in with the mid-range, you get a 
you get a really different sound than what you're used to hearing on a normal tweeter. Right. It, 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 I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, that's the most amazing thing. It's just different, and it's, it's, it's different in a cool way mm-hmm. for that type of performance. It's, it's just hard to explain how much different it sounds. But, you know, when we, fir- we, we, sh- we walk you through the whole tuning process on that one, and you probably guys will get to see that sometime around Christmas at this point. Yeah. Um, we kind of walk you through the whole thing. Like, we show you what the tweeter looks like on the RTA compared to the midrange and, and then what the final uh, output looks like. Um, and it's, it's really kind of fun. And it, I, I don't – when I can do loudspeakers with, an R- with a DSP, it's fun mm-hmm. because we get the results we want. Um, we still yeah. let them be themselves, like we still, but we also reel, reel them in so that you don't walk out of the car every day with, you know, ears right. ringing, unless that's right. what you want. Uh, would you keep gains up on the D4.800 if they max it out are solid, no distortion, but out, but cut, but what mm-hmm. cuts out, or, or what out outs are blinking with the music? They're supposed to blink with the music a little bit. Um, do we ever keep the gains all the way up on that one? There has been a few times where the source Mm. unit we're using isn't the greatest output, so the gains have had to stay at the 12 dB. One of the things that you guys obviously don't know on the D4.800, when they test the amplifier before it leaves, the DSP output gains are maxed out. They're set to 12 dB. So the first thing we do when we get it is turn it back down to zero. But sometimes, and we always tune at zero. Um, or we start tuning at zero, I yeah. should say, because we, we, they never stay there. They always end up going back up to something. But we also want to take a look at the signal that we're going to have to play with before we start turning them up. But no, if, if everything is, if the yellow lights are staying on 24-7, then no, if they're just blinking, then you're fine. Uh, go all the way to the bottom. Going to the bottom. Sorry. All right, so, uh, Dean, what is your take on time correct? Nice. Where? I missed it. Go you told me to go right there. there. Uh, Dean, what is your take on time correct 90s tape deck CD changer electronic crossovers in a so called 90s vehicle? Definitely outdate technology, but would you think that old school, old school system? I mean, I think it would be an old school system. One of the things that Jeff is doing right now is trying to put together an old school system. Did we that just. We just built his uh, dash trim pezzle for him. He's got an old Alpine. I think it's a 7909. He's got an old ERE G190 single DIN EQ. Crazy. Uh, and, of course, he's got a ton of Phoenix Gold. I don't remember what speakers and amps he's going with. Um, might be a bunch of Alpines. But, I, I mean, whatever turns you on. I, I'm, I'm not someone to dwell in the past and be like, 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 for example, I love where I've come from, and I love looking at antiques and, and whatnot. But when it comes to yeah. everyday use, like, I buy the latest cameras to take pictures. I'm not shooting with a, a film camera. Screw that shit. Give me the most megapixel having best low light thing that Canon makes, and that's what I'm going to buy because I'm setting myself up for the best of the best chance, you know, yeah. Audio is no different. To me, it's like, give me the coolest, newest thing you have that is going to do the job I need it to do. Otherwise, no, I'm not I'm not into that. All right. Um, What's up, Oscar? Hey. Any videos on the two, in the 250 trying to get some ideas? I, uh, I don't know, man. I don't think so. I don't, I don't know. If anything, it would just be like adding a sub or something. I don't think it'd be anything spectacular. Yeah, I don't think so. Ooh, I like the way that up looks, man. That turned out good. What did you, what mm. do you think about capacitors? I think they're spray paint cans with LEDs on them. That uh, you know, if you need a voltmeter, buy Steve Mead's cool voltmeter or a regular voltmeter. Um, don't waste your money on the capacitors. And with that being said, now not all capacitors are bad. Most right. of the cheap capacitors are bad, and that's the problem. They're well, kind of like useless. A stinger made like the big. The hybrid capacitors Capacitor were kind of cool. Meg, like that big one too. Yeah. Uh, if you're gonna get some of that. Mm, but I don't uh, know if I'd waste my money on it. I think I'd waste my money on a on small. On a big battery? Or a small battery. Huh. 
you know, yeah. like for like, I mean, yeah. if we're talking about money for money, right. you could get the small, like, SPV-20 style battery. A little bit more, uh, probably. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, though. Oh, I mean, for the tell. price? No, for the price, you're you're not going to get much. Because, I mean, you can buy a cap for 30 bucks. Yeah. You know? It's, it's, yeah, but not. It's garbage. It's not worth the money it's made out of. 30 bucks. I mean, the shrink wrap probably costs more Access than the Access power, caps. too. Yeah, man. Yeah, Access. Exactly. I don't know why I can never remember that name. It's just, it's, power? Yeah, it just goes in that void of things. It's like I know what it looks like, and I can picture the logo, but Excess Power just... It's like... Ah! Yeah, I know. Um, you're welcome. Uh, excess Power Super Caps. Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about, like the Super Cap. Yeah. The Super Cap, Crazy I've always one. found those useful, mm -hmm. but there again, I, I just I think a battery is the way to go. Battery. Um, Bobby Dang. says, D, next, next, uh, all right, hold on. Next to make us a Mandalorian symbol. Um, oh, you going to make a Mandalorian symbol? You know, that's one of the, it's so funny. Like, somebody sent me, I think Sue sent me a picture of, like, a laser Boba Fett. And it looked yeah. really cool. I just never do stuff for myself. Right. I'm mean, not going to lie. I just, I don't ever really get around to doing stuff for myself. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds, like, I guess bad, but. I don't do nothing for myself. I mean, he's got a cool Mayan calendar that oh, we totally did that turned out that awesome. Freaking cool. Yeah, Sue, it's... I just made Sue the, the they made, there was a really cool um, lightning because they won the Stanley Cup. Yep. So I found that and turned that into, because I had made her a Tigger because she's a big Tigger fan. And then I made the lightning's uh, Stanley Cup. That turned out really mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. She's like, she, uh, she's like, oh, this is so cool. It's like telling people and all that. I'm like, wow, okay, good, good for me. Yep. Um, you know, Haley, this will be the third thing I made for her, but I don't know. I just never, like, just like I don't have a stereo in my car. I just, I just never get around to it because it's like, I guess for me, honestly, when I get downtime, like, I don't want to do anything for anybody. And I just, even myself, I just want to sit there and just like, all right, hang on, hang not on. Not even think about it. Uh, yes, we sell Addison. Yes. Why we don't install a lot of Addison? Because it's expensive. And it's not... It's not for everybody. Exactly. Like, you telling the people, for example, like, today, if you want to catch the new show, Addison just came out with new stuff. Yeah. And it's not I mean, cheap. I personally own a and ton of Addison it's stuff. It's a quality. It's a quality, quality product. So, yeah. So, you know... It's badass. We do have an Audison system coming up, though. We'll okay. We'll, we'll be filming. We have a Subaru. Now, Paul, like, we sell Addison. Yeah. But they install everything or anything you bring. Not anything. Yes, not, not anything. Not anything, you know? like We'll install a lot, but yes. some stuff we won't do just because... They're going to bring a lot of stuff. Like, hey, man. No, I mean, some stuff we're just not going to do because yes. it's not the right stuff. I mean, we okay, prime example. Um, this week, early, one day this week, I don't know what it was, a gentleman showed up with a brand new car that he just bought, and he wanted to put his old amplifier and subwoofer yeah. in it. And he had a giant giant amplifier it was just freaking huge and the brand doesn't matter it was just a big 2400 watt amplifier yeah. not really and okay. he was he was like i want to put this in my car and i'm like there's no place to put this in your car that isn't going to look terrible it's a brand new car yeah. why would you want us to destroy this i can sell you for about the same amount of money that you're buying all because you had to buy a ton of accessories yeah for about this the same amount of money actually it was about a hundred dollars more with all the accessories that he wouldn't need to install this amplifier in the car we sold him a cs 800.1 that destroyed destroyed his old amplifier and hit up underneath the seat out of the way and looked super sexy he actually come in uh, like previous like thank you for the um yeah for the amp install the kicker was the right move yeah it, it was wow. like i just i couldn't it, i couldn't bring myself to put yeah. i was like please let me do this yeah. please please if for nothing else just because it'll look better and i don't want to make your car i don't want to ruin the interior of your car by screwing this two foot long amplifier somewhere. now if you want to see some artists on install we did a raptor like yeah thank you oscar uh we did a full yeah the raptor Audison system and that's who's that getting the uh the next audison system uh, yeah, of course so you gotta remember also so audison is part of electromedia electromedia is actually audison hertz and we carry audison because we carry hertz mm -hmm. um we do a lot more with hertz than we do audison it's a, it's a it's a wine slash beer relationship with those two companies um 
The Forza is a spectacular amplifier. Like for those who don't know, the Forza is an eight channel amplifier. Um, I happen to have one right here. This is my personal version of it. These are the two Prima amps. This is the Bitnove. Um, I love this stuff, but it's 85 watts by eight. And some people just, they, they don't understand and they get scared. They're like, oh my God, it's like $1,100 and it's only 85 watts. It's like, yeah, but it's a complete system. It's a complete system. You add that with the Prima speakers and you, it, it sounds amazing and you get a badass DSP. And, but you know, I want 120 watts. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I need it for you. Yep, yep, exactly. I ain't forcing the issue. All I do is make recommendations. Yeah. What gauge wire to use for P3 shallows? So, uh, because we've covered everything in braided loom, and the braided loom we typically use on that is like a quarter inch. Uh, this this stuff here, yeah. this quarter inch. Yeah. This is quarter. This is eighth quarter. This is actually this, which is three eighths. And this is half. And that's one inch or three quarters. Yeah, three quarters. Anyways, what I've what I do is this is the oh pardon me this is the wire rack here and this is 12 gauge so what we have is we have 12 gauge and then down here in the back we have 10 gauge and we have red and black of both when it comes to subwoofers I'm not a fan of running this stuff anymore because it just it, it sucks in the braided loom it makes it hard it doesn't bend real well whereas this stuff this stuff is super flexible because it's not attached. So most, actually all the subwire we do, unless we're doing a box, like if we're doing one run of subwire, it's either getting this 12 or it's getting this 10. Uh, and then it may split off into a 16 gauge. Um, but yeah, no, I much prefer doing this as opposed to anything else. Um, but that's that's just one of those things that we've slowly transitioned to and of course you put ferrules on the end for the speaker cup And it makes a really cool looking thing. All right All right, we got like right. We got a couple couple seconds here um, yeah. I think with that we're gonna end the show here guys. Thanks so much for tuning in to five minutes with five star It is Friday if you didn't check out the news this morning you Over there it. on Dean and Fernando's car stereo clips definitely check out the news. It was a really good news day It was shocking. There was uh -huh. it was groundbreaking there was so much cool news and it's all happy news yes for god's sakes it's happy news we don't we get talk happy about news. sports we talk about no we're not talking about, we not talk about like sports <laughs> i mean we could but we're not <laughs> going to because i don't know shit about yeah. football so anyways i will be watching the super bowl but i will not be caring i watch it for the commercials Ooh, yellow looks good all right tomorrow is saturday six o'clock eastern standard time That's on right. youtube We'll be doing more Q&A, so if we didn't get your question today, make sure you tune in over there. What's up, Platinum Motor Works? You guys have a spectacular day. We will see you tomorrow. Bye. Go with God. Have fun Bye. and all that good stuff. Bye. He's on the move. Got to track Fernando. Fernando Tracker. It's like the Predator. Who's a fan of the Predator? The real one with Arnold Schwarzenegger, not these 10 other silly ones. It's like one of my all-time favorite movies. Me. You like Fernando? Oh man, I saw this. This thing popped up in Instagram last night where you can buy artwork from movies. And they had a picture of Mac when he grabbed Jesse Ventura's um, minigun. Okay. And like in right after Jesse Ventura got shot with the, you know, with the thing and blew his chest out. And it's him sitting there shooting the minigun. And it's like all art decoed and looks all like funky pop type you know stuff so it's not like a, a high gloss thing it's like artwork okay man it was so freaking cool i was like oh just move on dean move on because i'm a sucker for artwork guys i mean i know you don't uh, but yeah what's up mr berg hello from northern minnesota it's 50 you you guys are having a heat wave hanging out hey guys dean do you use venom ven ven what is uh, you're, you kind of got crud V Ven Venom Yenum. Type that question again, um, Florida guy, because it, it somehow got crushed in the comments. Crush. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It, it, it did weird things. That was accident on the comments. 
Ah, oh, love those pretzel chips. Oh yeah, this is this is a chick's car. This is a chick Jeep we're working on here. Um, I believe she's a softball player, and I only assume that because we have these shoes here, which are covered in clay. Uh, so we're adding in a Alpine backup camera with the uh, Kenwood Kenwood radio on the dash. It's funny. So you can't see it, but let me see if I can. Get so we made we had to make this little adapter you can kind of see the jeep logo like right there but we had to make an adapter to shrink up the hole for this so this piece of plexi you'll never see it like they'll never know it's there but it's it's there and that makes me feel better about it audio system is joined love the wiring guys looks very familiar you guys are doing great I wire another jeep i know right Hey, from Wesley Chapel, 75 here in Orlando. I'm at SeaWorld, rub it in. Ooh. Focal K2s or Morel hybrids, Fernando? I'm gonna put the hybrids and I'm gonna let you know. Yep, all right. Ven Venom. Venom, I love Venom. I mean, I have the movie. <laughs> so, if, if, you, if you watch The Boring Life of Dean and Haley, um, I, I, I think it's in the background. But last week, we did an update on, like, Haley's life with her new job and all that other fun stuff. And if you, if you look over Haley's shoulder on the wall, there's a picture of Venom, but it's also the Memorex, TV, the Memorex commercial they did for the TDK tapes called Blown Away. If you've never seen the Blown Away image, it's a guy that's sitting in a chair and has these JBL classic home speakers sitting at him and, like... He's just sitting there like all chilled out and the lamp is twisting and all that other fun stuff. But it's it's, it's a play on that. And I had to have it as soon as I saw it because it's Venom like with his mouth open yelling and it's all color. And then it fades to the black and white of the blown away scene. I was like, yeah. Uh, Venom, it's a cash app. Oh, okay. But no, I like the Venom movie too. But no, Ven Venmo. He's talking about Venmo. Vimo, no? Venmo. It's called Venmo. I saw Venom. I'm dyslexic, man. What? The Venmo cast app. Oh, oh it's Christian. Yeah. So, Why what would, are we talking no. about now? We're, we're talking, talking about, about Venmo. Cash, but we talk about movies. We talk about I know, yeah. pretzels. Venom, peer-to-peer. -peer, or Venmo, peer-to-peer. Peer-to-peer money app. Payment app. Thank you, guys. See, you guys are paying way more attention than I am. I just like things like Hi from Massachusetts is 39. You just want to hear the weather? I just like the weather, man. I like to, like, it makes me feel good. Thoughts on silicone speaker baffles. All right, so let's think about that for a minute. Are we, oh, that was neat. Are we talking about the silicone speaker like fast ring type things or the baffles that go behind the speakers? Baffles behind the speakers I'm not a fan of. They're great if you're trying to keep rain off the speaker and you cut, like it's it's just a, like, a, like a tube. Uh, but you need the back of the speaker open for the for air to get if you close off the back of the speaker You're gonna lose all your mid bass um, But if you're talking about the the piece that goes across the front like a fast ring those are pretty sweet I big big shout out to those those are those are really nice So if that's what you're talking about send you a message regarding 2000 uh, If you send me a message here on Instagram, I probably will never see it. I, I never check those. I'm sorry um but feel free to tune in tonight at six o'clock eastern standard time on youtube because we'll be doing the uh the show that we do and that'd be a great place to ask that question because we can dig deep and have all kinds of fun right right fernando right 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 someone right, says right, hey right. fernando hey hey how hey. are you what's up what's up venmo is a cash app i saw venom man i'm not gonna lie i just i switched Dude, I the letters how do you say how, venom I, Cause I, I, we were talking about movies. We were talking about movies. That doesn't. And I'm, and I'm, tr I'm doing multitasking here, man. Hey, listen, man. Uh, tornado warnings in Orlando. That sucks. We are in clear water. Do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, Haley has the Venmo app. I know she does. Oh really? Yeah, that's yeah. old school with a K. Uh, hey, shout out from Dallas, Texas. 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 Hi, Dean. What do you think about the D1200 as a DSP? I was debating between getting the DM608 and the LC61200 or the D... Okay, so this is something that we've put a lot of thought on. There are some really good ways to use the D61200. And then there's some really bad ways to use the D61200 where going with a DM810 is better. So, for example, 
If you're planning on doing, let's say, a set of components up front, rear, and a sub, the 61200 is wonderful for that because you have channels one through four can be for the front, five and six can be for the rear, and then the seven and eight power put going off to, let's say, an LC 1.800 or the 1500. Wonderful system. If you're looking to do a three way set, that's where it gets kind of weird, like, because then you have no rear output at all. So that's kind of a bummer. And if you're looking at bridging it into, let's say, like a staggered power, a big four channel amp, not a good idea for that either. Uh, in which case you just want to do an LC. So really the best scenario for that amplifier are two. If you're going to do a component front set, tweeter mid, rear, sub, or if you're going to, okay, three. If you're going to do a three-way set only and a sub, or if you're going to use it as a quasi five-channel amplifier where you're like just going to do one sub, so you're going to like front, rear, and one sub. Other than that, I would totally go the other way, DM810. Um, so like if I want to do a three-way set, rear and sub, I do a DMA-10 and get the LC-61200 and maybe the, the LC-4.800 and use half of it for a sub and rear fill. Uh, would you prefer ZVX, SCAR subs, or four, so 212s or 4.8s, Fernando? I guess it really doesn't matter on the brand, but... Uh, oh, here, put this in there. You like the 4.8s? Yeah. I like the 212s. I'm not gonna lie, I like the 212s. The 4.8s are wonderful, but I still like 4 12, or 212s. 4 is better than 2, ha! Yeah, sure. Hey, Dean, here it. Hey. Hertz Milli Pro's power handling question. Is the rating for the set 110 watts for each side, or is it 55 per side? It's per, per, per combination of pairs. So it's 110 watts. When you get a rating for a speaker, it's for that group of speakers. So it's not like an amplifier where it's a 400 watt amp, which means it's like four by 100 gets you your 400 watts. And when you're looking at speaker ratings, if it's a 90 watts power handling, it's 90 watts per speaker or per combination of speakers. So if you do like a component set like those where you have a tweeter, maybe a mid-range and a mid-bass or a two-way where you have a tweeter and a mid-bass, it's 110 watts for the whole set. Um, as a whole if you break them apart power handling does change but that's not really the question um oh jesus convince my buddy to go dsr1 and his 18 250 instead of an lc7i oh thank god you did yourself a favor there now you just get to help him tune it <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah all right uh we got you dean okay thanks uh, are full cal components in a different league than the Alpine, Kenwood, etc.? Yes and no. Because that's always the answer to every question. There's a yes and a no. It all depends on your perspective of what is good and what is bad. So, for example, if you look at something like Kenwood, Kenwood makes Kenwood entry level speakers, Alpine makes the S type entry level speakers, and Focal makes Auditor entry level speakers. They're all about the same price point. They're all like apples for apples. And then you get into, let's say, the Exelon line or the XR line. And then you get into the R line. And then you get into the Access line. There again, very similar price points, very apples for apples. You get into the X line of Alpine. And then Kenwood just kind of stops right there. I mean, they have their high-res speakers, but mm, they kind of stop right there as far as price goes. And then you get into, let's say, the Flax with the Kenwood, um, with the... Um, Focal. Now the flax are going to cost more than the X, but they're all right in there in that same price point. Now that actually might be about the same amount of money. Um, higher end speakers, bigger tweeters, different builds, more attention to detail. Uh, when you look at the Focal, those are in-house built now as opposed to uh, third-party built. Um, God only knows what's going on with Alpine as far as who's building what over there. But yeah, I mean Alpine definitely just like Kenwood you know, designs all their products. They don't buy off the shelf stuff. But, so yeah, the answer, as I said, is yes and no. Good luck. <laughs> uh, how could you run two 12 inch subs, but still keep your five channel amp? Can you do it? Of course you can. It just all comes down to ohm load. So if you have a, a five channel amp, that is a two ohm load you need to make sure that the two subs that you get come out to a two ohm load. So if you have, let's say, dual two ohm 12 inch subwoofers, 
that's going to be a four ohm load and a four ohm load which is going to get you a two ohm load at the amplifier as long as they're within the power range or you're okay with the amount of power the five channel is going to put out to those subwoofers it works all the time um, but yeah uh <laughs> um all right, hold on. Let's just let's just move down here. Uh, how would you run the four point the all right, the four point eight hundred? Are you control to run rear speakers and a single sub? Uh, all right, hold on. Control run rear speakers and a single sub. If you're doing the DMA ten on the LC61200 and the 4.800, that takes us to 10 channels. So the, the DMA10 would assign those channels. On the four channel, you would bridge three and four to the subwoofer to get the 400 watts off to the subwoofer, I guess would be the answer to that question. Good crossover points for T2 components. I have a DSR1 two sets. Ah, shoot. I have no idea off the top of my head. I don't remember what the FS is on that speaker. Your best bet is to f see if you can find the FS, which I it's either in the owner's manual or might be on their website. Find FS, multiply that by two, set your crossover to 24 dB with that number, and you're rocking and rolling. He'll be all set. Uh, I have a five channel amp. Would you recommend running front active? and rear off brick amp or just go passive with the five channel morel maximo speakers oh q class 1005 i like the brick amp idea uh diamore clean d amp do you know anything about them i do not know anything about them i have not had a chance to play with them um so don't know yet i think big d just did a power thing on them to see what it is oh goody really back to back huh fun this is a uh, Toyota RAV4 we'll be putting a radio in now and it's oh, the 407 he gets really creative on these he doesn't put a lot of effort into it um, alright moving on what do we got in case you're wondering yes we still do COVID cleans on all the cars Fernando right now, as you can see, is going to town, cleaning the car out. Next, we'll be using some aerosol to kill all the germs that are in the upholstery and some stuff like that. Uh, T Steve Mead spoke to Tony. Clean D and the Diamores means no noise can get... Okay. I mean, I figured as much. Uh, okay, I'm going to use the six-channel on a set of Kenwood Excellence in my Tacoma as a three-way so i would need the dma 10 correct you are correct sir no man i want you to sneeze he sneezes it's funny uh what would cause noise in usb wine popping um oh, i have no idea on that one off the top of my head, I don't know. Maybe a bad cable is usually, when you get USB noise, it's typically a bad cable. If it's a brand new cable, then obviously that's not it, but I would always check the cable. Good afternoon, gents. Uh, from Toronto, thoughts on the Hertz Uno line of speakers. Looking at a five channel amp, set up Kenwood and Kenwood all Hertz. I mean, I gotta be honest with you. Why not do all Kenwood Exelon? I mean, it makes a little bit more sense. And it's probably, might be, it's either gonna be the same amount of money, maybe a little cheaper. I would do, like if, if that was me, I'm gonna go with 393. First off, don't go with a 393, man. Go a little bit higher and get yourself into something that has CarPlay or Android Auto. Whether you want it or not, why not? You can get the DMX 4707S for about the same amount of money, my guess. Um, I would go with the 8205 or the 9205. I'd pick myself a set of the Exelon. Um, depending on the car, they have the six by nine components and they also have the six and a half and the seven inch components. I would totally rock the whole Exelon system. Be freaking awesome. And yeah, they're, they're worth every penny of it for sure. But that's just me. I have nothing against Hertz, but when I'm looking at the Unos, I'm gonna, uh, same amount of money I can get into those Exelons. I would much rather do that. Hey Dean, what do you think about a pair of Audio Frog GS62s? With a stock Bose system. I don't like anything in a stock Bose system. 
it just never works out it's it's just a recipe for disaster those just they're not if you're looking for better sound it's not the way to do it if you've got a set of blown bow speakers and you're like oh i need to replace them it depends on the year make and model of the car but sometimes it's worth it just to go order the factory bow speaker and put it back in because it just doesn't work that well um what's this car getting a new head unit yeah it's getting a new head unit that's saturday saturday you know it's so we, we figured out we have like basically two types of days. We have project days and maintenance days. And depending on how the cars fall throughout the week, Saturdays typically turn into maintenance days now because you know you either have to be finishing a big project Saturday or you finished it Friday and that means Saturdays just catch up with all the little odds and ends that we you know didn't get to during the week. Um, you should make five star masks. No, and let me tell you why, because I hate masks. I wear them as I'm supposed to. I have a stockpile of them everywhere like all of us, but I don't want people to spend money on a branded mask that is going to go in the trash. So as much as I would love someone to be like rocking a five-star mask and all that, it just, principle of it pisses me off. And it just, because we talked about it. We talked about doing masks, right, Fernando? What? Doing like a five-star mask. Oh, yeah. But I was just like, no, man, I can't do it. I, I refuse to spend money on anything other than, like, a black mask or, like, Haley Rock's the blue doctor's mask because she just, she has, you know, she works with kids and that's what they use. Um, but, no, I just, I just can't I can't do it because it's end of this year, man, if God willing, those things are going to, we're all going to have bonfires, right? Think about it. Think of the bonfires we're going to have with all these masks. Just burn Actually, them all. Helps. Burn them all. It helps. What, the mask? Mm -hmm. Helps what? If you, that's cold. We're not talking. Oh, geez, if it's cold. <laughs> you know? Anyways, that, that's why we don't have masks. Because we have plenty of opportunity to do it. I just don't want to do it. Any way to turn down a capped tweeter running passive? Yeah, that's what an EQ is for. Turn the EQ down. Um, one cool feature that the Exelon decks have is they have a... a low pass filter for tweeters built into their deck so you can go in and you can turn down the the tweeter frequencies the high band so like 10k and up it adds a low pass crossover so like a low pass and will bring the volume of the tweeter down but remember equalization is volume control if you grab all three of those last frequencies on your eq and start pulling those down it's going to turn down the tweeter now, if you have other tweeters in the car, well, then no. But, yes, you can, you can easily do that using your EQ, or if you have a Kenwood Exelon head unit, you can do it in the head unit. It's a pretty cool idea. Um, or put a piece of carpet over it, whatever works for you. That would be cool. I know, right? Make it happen, Dean. Five-star mask. Nope. Uh, what's a waste of... That's a waste of a good speaker. Yeah, you, well, yeah, that's my thought, too. How can I get a calendar? I'll pay for it. Um, we're still working on that. Uh, 94 Firebird, so excited. So, Exelon set up. It'll be perfect. Uh, 016 Silver Out, replace factory hand unit. Do you know if they have or will soon make anything to be able to retain your factory USB? Uh, 2016, no, because it's a hub. So, there'll be a panel at some point. Someone will probably make a panel. But these radios... The only radio right now that works through a hub is a Stinger High 10, but your main brand radios, Kenwood, Exelon, Pioneer, Sony, all that, do not pull through a hub. Therefore, you're not going to be able to retain the factory USB. I know it sucks. Uh, is it possible to rewire a kicker load 10 inch 2 ohm down to 10 2 ohm down to 1 ohm in order to get the most out of a key 501? If the box says 2 ohm on it, no. You'd have to get a different woofer. So if you get the two ohm box, no, it's not going to do it because that's a dual four ohm sub. So you have eight or two. That's it. Those are the ohm loads you get. Um, you could do a five star logo like a sundial mat. No, no mass. Mass suck. Agreed. I wear them, but yeah, your one is legit. Thank you. Uh, what's your thoughts on the kicker 401 running a kicker? Uh, that would work perfectly. You may also want to look at a key 501. Just saying, if you have an aftermarket head unit, cool. But if you got a factory head unit, the key 501, better money spent. Um, but yes, I get it. Then you, you two ohm DVC. No, I understand. So if the ohm load is the, the big problem here, then stick with the 401. Uh, so I didn't hear the answer to my question on 
uh, would I need the DMA-10 or not? Yes, you'd, you'd want the DMA-10. Go with what you talked about, the DMA-10 would be the way to go. Exactly, yes. Um, thank you again for doing as much. Uh, you bet, no problem. All right, Saludo. Uh, single 15-inch kicker L7 and a kicker with how, ooh, wow. How would you tune it? Well, you set the gain, you set the crossover, and, you know, you have the, the aftershock that you just do by ear because that's what it's made to do. And that's, that's really all. You're not really tuning the amplifier. You're setting the amplifier. You set gains. You set crossover. You tune EQs. Um, so there's not a lot of tuning going on. There's a lot of setting. The nice thing about the K, I'm sorry, the nice thing about the ZX100 is that it has the um, DD1 style feature distortion detection built into it. So that part of it is done for you. All you have, I mean, you don't have to go buy anything extra. So you play the test tones that you can download from their website, which they tell you about in the instruction manual. So you set your game properly, um, five or 10 dBs of overlap, whichever you prefer. And that's done. All you need to do is get the crossover right. Uh, and there again, somewhere around 80 hertz is usually a good place to start. Uh, and then Aftershock. Aftershock is there for you to have fun with. So there is no right or wrong answer for Aftershock. It just depends on what uh, music you're listening to. Uh, it'll be Aftermarket. Well, there you go. Then you don't need the key features. Um, I mean, the high amp is cool because it does all the DSP for you, but the 5 channel wouldn't, wouldn't really help you. Uh, first time going active three-way up front. What DSP would you recommend? You have to count your channels. You have to know how many channels you need to have. That is the most important thing when deciding on how you're going to do your DSP. So, for example, if you're going to do a three-way set up front, that's six channels. If you're going to do sub only, that's seven channels. That means you're going to get an eight channel. Uh, anything eight channel would work. However, if you're going to do rear channels and sub, well, that's six, eight, nine minimum very few companies make a nine channel. However, there is one that makes a really cool nine channel for just this specific occasion. And that is the Audison Bit Nove, this guy right here. It's a nine channel DSP. So that allows you to do six channels, two channels, and a sub, and a center if you wanted. But yes, it doesn't have an up mixer, it just has an output for a center. But otherwise, you're gonna to wanna to look at something that has 10 channels or more. And with that, we're gonna call it there. This has been Five Minutes of Five Star. We gotta to get to it. We gotta get this radio in the dash. Fernando's getting antsy. We'll be back tonight at six o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Where will we be, Fernando? On YouTube. That's right. Yes. What do you, do you wanna say goodbye? Goodbye. Goodbye, farewell, adieu.